do you want to eat this costume with ketchup or mayo? Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 26 of TMNT Shellcast. We are reviewing uh, season three, episode eight, The Fifth Turtle today. I will be your host, Chris, joined, as always, by my brothers, Andrew. Andrew, how are we? Doing great. Doing great. And John, how is John today? John is also doing great. And I have a question just to kick this off on the right foot that I had to give you guys a little heads up on. Here's the question. What feels illegal but isn't? Andrew, do you want to go first? Uh, no, I'll defer to you, Chris. Okay. I'll well, go I first. Have two... Okay. <laughs> go no, ahead, John. You can go. No, you got it. You can go. All right. Well, I have two that came to mind. One... I think everybody can relate to because everybody's parents told the same lie. Turning the dome light of a car on while you're driving was the first thing that came to mind. Yeah. Are we sure that's not illegal? I don't know. I still don't do it. (laughs) And the second thing, and this, because I feel like that first one everyone says, um, the second thing I think is when you go into a store but you don't buy anything and then you leave. I always feel a little bit uncomfortable walking out with nothing in my hands because I, th- I think that they think I'm stealing something. Yeah. And so that's a great one. At a store. Yeah. I got, I got one for you. This is uh similar to what Chris had just mentioned, but at a grocery store, when you're selecting bananas and you break off bananas to get just the, what there's the number that you want. Not illegal, but definitely feels like it. Yeah, I didn't know you could do that until like my young adult life, which is I feel like is later than you should learn that. Yeah. How about um, using the bathroom of a restaurant or a gas station without buying anything? Yeah, yeah. Like definitely. not even gas. You just show up because you have to use the bathroom and then you leave. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How public is that restroom really? Although There's some places have smartened up and now you need like, especially in the cities, you need a receipt or something to be able to use the bathroom. Well, they print the code, the bathroom code on the receipt. Yeah. That should be illegal. Denying somebody <laughs> the ability to use the bathroom. It's crazy. What about um, going for thirds at the um, soda fountain? Mm-hmm. Kind of illegal. Yeah. Feeling. Like we're even mixing one... soda flavors at the fountain. It yeah. Illegal. Yeah. You know, just grabbing a whole handful of uh, hot hot sauce from Taco Bell and only eating like two of them at home. Yeah. Or how about um, in some like, at least by the package store, like the liquor store that was where we grew up, you could just make your own six pack of beer. You could just like pull random ones and put it in your own six pack and buy that. That definitely felt yeah. illegal. Eating a fortune yeah. cookie before you finish your meal. <laughs> take out Chinese food <laughs> alright Yeah. so that's a great way to start the episode but now John you have to eat your pizza, pizza time. so mm. you lost after rigging poll after poll in TikTok <laughs> for weeks so you didn't get a loss you are finally uh, have to answer the bell here so tell everybody yeah. what you spun last week and what you're about to eat yeah, I need to. It's time to pay the Pied Piper. So last week, w- one of the one of the myriad of anchovy pizzas that we have on the pizza wheel, yours truly spun and landed on anchovy, which we've done before, if I'm not mistaken. And so this week for anchovy, I decided I said it on the last episode, and I followed through. I said I was going to chef it up a little bit. So I've sent the photo. What I ended up doing was. It's just an Elio's pizza. There's a little, ooh, just an Elio's, John. No, no, just an no. Elio's. <laughs> no, no, it, it's Elio's. It looks, it looks interesting. I made a little anchovy sauce. 
caramelized. Yeah. 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 I made a little anchovy sauce. It's olive oil with anchovies that I just disintegrated into the olive oil with garlic and lemon. Ooh. And a little red and a little red pepper flakes. And it's just it's on top of Vanilios, and I'm gonna eat it. I did try the sauce independently because I was scared, and it was great. It was fresh, as as acid usually does. So here we go. Well, in Yulio's pizza can only enhance any ingredient it touches. So it's a nice crunch. It looks like. Wow. Looks like a little corner got burnt there on the back end. Wow. Yeah. It's Flew very too too close to the broiling sun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you can tell it's salty. Pizza. It's salty. You can smell. You can taste the anchovies, but the lemon. It it also I, I thought about putting some capers in there, which I did not much. do. Be too much. Too yeah. salty. But this is this is fantastic. This is a chefed up anchovy. And so, it's it's definitely not my favorite pizza, but the flavor is good. I'm gonna go six dollars and sixteen cents for this bad boy. Not bad. Six dollars and sixteen cents. Where does Andrew? I don't know if you have the uh, pizza board mm. up. Where does that land? Uh, I have. Mm. I do not have it up. John, actually, yeah, that's mm. John. Usually has it. Yeah, he's he's got mm. anchovy on his lip. John's <laughs> the worst, the worst pizza eater on the pot because mm. all his shouts is mm, 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 mm. yeah, a hundred times. Mm. That was mm. good. Uh, interestingly, this is actually shocking to me. That ranks below sashimi for me. So that's that's not great because it's definitely better than sashimi. But the wheel says what John says it will say. So $6.16 is what I would pay for that one. So for all his bragging about chefing pizzas up, John's taste buds seem to be the least accurate mm. out of all of us. It's below yeah. banana and sausage, if you can't believe it. Because his... Um... Sashimi pizza was weak sauce too. It was one single piece of salmon on the corner. Yeah. Someone call it a pizza. cop out. Yeah, but, but would you they, have me? They wouldn't have seen while we're on the, the chocolate of... episode. Yeah, the first pizza. I will say uh, while we're on the topic of pizza, a big pizza Friday this past Friday, Ooh, where all of us unintentionally or maybe intentionally ate pizza for dinner. So, oh, yeah. it's Friday is catching on. They're sweeping the nation. <clears throat> yeah, we I even mean, got yeah. a we even got a foot soldier in the mix there too. It wasn't just the host, right? Oh yeah, a little Matt, a little Matt action. Yeah, yeah, a little uh, Matt who was in the he was a groomsman in my wedding. Also had a pizza on Friday, although the photo evidence he definitely ate the pizza. I'll give him that. Yeah, <laughs> um, but yeah. And then I, and then I started liking tweets, but I was in the wrong account. So TMNT Showcast was liking a lot of tweets. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the Twitter, I, I, I don't want to call it, I don't want to call it a revival, but the Twitter is feels like making a comeback. I think I think really what it is is I'm the kingmaker. I I replied to that Pizza Friday tweet, and then it it started getting buzzing. Uh, I don't know if I would say that, but <laughs> I'd remind you to go and like tweets. You know what John's on Twitter because there's a flurry of liking tweets from like weeks past. <laughs> He's just going down the the feed. Down the Rasta. Twitter's tough. So Twitter's tough. Yeah, it's just honestly it's I've been a Twitter veteran been on twitter a long time i love twitter it's just dead out there there's nothing there's no engagement anymore so now to get into the episode unless anybody has anything they want to cover before we dive right in all right not my favorite not start. my favorite episode i'm just gonna leave it at that yeah i this kind of like just is probably gonna dissolve into the ether for me it wasn't great it wasn't terrible but not the most engaging character, I guess. We'll get into. But 
the episode The Fifth Turtle opens. We're in Donnie's lab, which appears to have been upgraded since the last time we visited. So Donnie is charting planetary movements. He's particularly focused on the position of Jupiter and where it was in the early 1900s to where it is in current times. And he's kind of zeroed in on that. And all of a sudden, Leo uh, shouts that there's an emergency. And it gets Donnie's attention. And he says, oh, boy, is it something to do with Shredder? And Leo and the others say, well, you were pretty close. It's actually uh, shredded cheese. And we are out of shredded mozzarella. So Mm. they've chosen Donnie to go to the store to get some. Um, which tells you where Donnie ranks in the turtle hierarchy, at least amongst themselves. Yeah. I I vote for shredded mozzarella as a pizza. Get it on there. Ooh, I didn't even think about that. Oh, yeah. You neither. Isn't that just a standard pie? <laughs> Cheese? Oh, yeah. I guess. Shredded mozzarella. Shredded just, moss. It's the OG. Classic. Shredded That's mozzarella. fair. And in, you know, a lot of talk about planets. What What's your guys' stance on... Pluto, um, bring it. Yeah, what just? Yeah, give me your Pluto hot take if you got one. Well, I was actually I just had this conversation with my five year old because he was claiming that a friend of his at work or not at work, a friend of his at school. <clears throat> I don't don't worry, I don't live in Iowa. I'm not sending my kids to work yet, um, <clears throat> or wherever that was, Nebraska. But uh, he said his friend said that Pluto is not a planet. In fact, um, and it hasn't been for a long time. So I don't know when after elementary school is when Pluto, I think, was removed as a planet. But I after thought our, our learning, right? I thought it made a comeback and was reintroduced as a planet. I don't know. Yeah. It should it's be gone. Yeah. John's, John's shaking his head planet. like he knows and he's not saying it. No, there, it definitely was not a planet and then came back into there was I think there was some buzz around it being a planet again, but I don't know where it fell out in the knowledge. I don't know. I just know Neptune Neptune isn't fit to be the last planet in the string. So if it's not Pluto, we need I think I feel like when I was in elementary school there was planet X was supposed to be after Pluto, but I don't know if that's an actual real thing. I feel like it's not. Yeah, clearly and just mi- mix it up with Dimension X. Myth. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, yeah, exactly. That's where Krang's at. So Donnie gets nominated to go to the store to get shredded mozzarella. And he's saying, hey, guys, there's, you know, a planetary alignment coming up this week. I can't do it, which doesn't really make sense because if it's this week, he has plenty of time. But ultimately, he says, all right, I will go to the store, the 24-hour store. But Raph, you have to come with me because you're second to last on the totem pole and I'm not going by myself. So I think, I think he actually called it the all nighter store or, or something like that, wasn't it? Yeah, the all yeah, the all night. I think the all night store he said. Yeah, the all night um, store. Which I think in New York are just bodegas. I'm pretty sure they're open all night. The store they end up going to seems a little bit bigger than a bodega, but I guess it's accurate for the city. So they throw on the dock worker disguises and the masks that April gave them. I forget what episode it was, but kind of the bald man, creepy face masks and a white face going on. Yeah. I'll be honest. The first time I watched the episode, I was fooled because I didn't realize <laughs> as they were walking into the store, I thought they were other characters. I didn't know it was the turtles in disguise. So they got me, but they walk into the store They grab their cheese, and it seems like a host of other groceries. They come out holding their paper bags and take off their masks and start to walk down a dark alley, presumably back to the sewer, when out jumps what I am going to call the punks. Are we in agreement that these are the punks this time? Wholeheartedly. Yeah, we can agree. Okay, good. I didn't want to go on a punk like kid who cried wolf on the punks coming out every episode but yeah, i know you said the, that last episode i know and then they popped up this episode and i'm like <laughs> this they can't say no to this these guys look <laughs> like the punks from the first episode so the punks jump out and 
they kind of corner the turtles and they're going to mug them and the turtles rip off their costumes. They're ready to fight when in drops the fifth turtle who is appears to be a boy dressed as a ninja turtle. He has a trash can lid shell. He's got his own green bandana wrapped around his eyes. He's got a hockey stick, which is kind of cool. Um, and he's clearly dressed up as a Ninja Turtle. And he says, hey, I'm a Ninja Turtle too. And I'm here to stop you and fight crime, just like the real guys. And as he goes to advance on the punks, he immediately trips and falls flat on his face. And then the turtles, using this as distraction, engage the punks. So, Andrew, do you remember what Donnie does? to start it off, start off the fight? Oh, that's a great question. So Donnie, I think he does like a roundhouse kick or some sort of, yeah, some sort of kicking action, which takes out one or two of the bad guys. Yeah, he does. He Chuck Norris is the trash yeah. can, that's flinging it into one of the guys, sending him off. One of the cooler fight scenes, I think, so far. Spins that off. And then Raph, quick thinking Raph, jumps up and grabs a fire escape and uses it kind of like a diving board to fling another punk up into the air and he lands in a trash can and it tips over and he eliminates that guy. Yeah, that ladder move, I my I was slack-jawed after I saw that because that was Raph just plus 10, 10 points for Gryffindor for Raph because he flung that guy and it was great. Yeah, it was a quick fight scene, but it was action packed yeah and it's good to see raf just in action you know we were yeah. we were yeah, he, last episode he wasn't doing shit this is a big episode for him it is it is and we'll <laughs> get into it a little bit because i've got a discussion point about it but also this zach i think his name is zach the fifth turtle yep is that yep. right chris yeah he with the hockey stick really gave me a lot of um casey, casey jones. jones vibes yeah even though i believe it's a cricket paddle that case we, we haven't seen Casey yet, right? No, I know. I thought this was maybe like a little origin story for Casey. <laughs> I thought so too when I first saw it, but then I saw a clip of the actual Casey Jones, and it's not the same. Mm. Yeah. But so the turtles kick these punks' butts. Zach now pops up off the ground and he's ready to fight again, but he accidentally hits uh, Raph and Donnie at the same time with his hockey stick in the face. They're kind of standing behind him. He accidentally smashes into him. They both go crashing to the ground and Raph's turtle com kind of pops out of his shell or his pocket, or I don't really know where they keep them, but it kind of goes scattering across the ground and the punks run off. So they got beat up. They kind of had a chance, but they run away because they're scared. And the turtles are bullshit at Zach there. He says, Hey, I love you guys. I want to be just like you. My name is Zach. And I think it's Raph is particularly angry calls yeah, him a real, menace and says real angry. Like, get out of here yeah very angry not having zach's involvement whatsoever in this entire episode yeah, yeah. and donnie donnie was pretty rude i thought yeah. he was pretty rude to zach he's like get out of here you're Scram. basically yeah skedaddle scooch yeah so zach is upset and he runs off. And as he's running, he kicks the turtle com that fell out of Raph's pocket and he kind of kicks it down the alley with him. Um, and he picks it up and takes it with him. And then the turtles are instantly kind of the sad music plays and they're like, oh, I guess maybe we were a little hard on this kid, but whatever. Like, we got stuff we got to do. Let's get out of here. And they leave. Meanwhile, back at the Technodrome, Krang is given Shredder a little lesson in astrology. So he's explaining what it appeared that Donnie was investigating at the start of the episode. And he's saying, listen, Shredder, tomorrow there is a planetary alignment of Mars, the Earth, and the Moon. And during this alignment, if we can take some capsidium crystals and place them under the microscope at the planetarium, the light will generate enough energy to lift the technodrome to the surface of the Earth. So there's a lot there. 
Krang is basically explaining the entire premise of this episode. We had never heard of capsidium crystals before this, but basically they need to get these things, put them under the microscope, and that is the new plan in a long list of plans to get the Technodrome back up and running. What light is Crane talking about? The Makes light no sense. from the planets? I know, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah. I Because I, I, I had to watch it a few times and be like, what the hell's going on here? Yeah, because they, they call it the planetary conjunction. Several times I didn't look it up. I don't think it's an actual thing. Uh, it, it may be, but obviously it's been elaborated. I don't know why. I think the reason I'm not a big fan of this episode because these crystals remind me of the Eye of Sarnoth like string that we had at the beginning. Was it this season or season two? I can't remember. Uh, two. Two. Two, yeah. And I just, I, I could do without crystals. So pass. I'm a hard pass on the crystals. Yeah. yeah crystals, and... crystals are not big in uh, American culture. Not a big American thing. I will say, I used to be an anti-crystal guy. I went to the Hall of Minerals in the Smithsonian Natural History Museum in D.C. They're pretty cool. Chris is Rocks. fucking drink, drinking the crystal Kool-Aid now. <laughs> yeah, the crystal kinda, light, crystal light, baby. Kind of into a crystal. I'm a, not, I don't have them around the house yet, but rocks, not not too lame. Not as lame Are as you I just know. into like the, like the shape of crystals or like the the extra powers that no, they may I'm have not, with you. I'm not a big crystals have powers guy. I just think it's cool that the shapes they make and the colors that they can be very vibrant colors in nature. Hmm. So, Which speaking right, of crystals, <clears throat> speaking of crystal, I just want to give a shout out to third eye blind crystal baller. Great song. Yeah. People uh, forget. I like them first and Andrew stole them from me. Yeah. That's probably the best crystal crystal baller. I'm also yes, drinking. Because... John mentioned Crystal Light. Pull Crystal Light for you. As as everybody knows, when you grew up in a family of three, you're not allowed to have a favorite of the same thing. You all have to like different yeah. things. Which I realized not everybody else is like that. So a lot of people, in fact, cheer for everything the same as their family. So, yeah. Interesting. Andrew's Kermit. Andrew's obviously <laughs> Kermit. I'm Gonzo. And Chris is Fozzie. Yeah. And you're not allowed to like the same thing as the other person. No. Nope. So. All right. So, Krang's got his plan. And he tells Shredder, sorry, but you have less than 24 hours to steal these crystals, seize control of the planetarium, and make this plan happen. And Shredder is not happy about that. He's like, Krang, you son of a bitch. You could have figured this out before. Why am I always doing what you ask? One of these days, I'm going to leave you, and you're going to be without your... He he calls himself his good right... Krang's good right hand. So he's mumbling mm-hmm. to himself. He gets in the transport module. And I think this is the first episode where the transport modules now have like a tunnel out of the Technodrome, where they go up a tube with a door instead of just cranking through the ground. Yeah. I, was, I had a note here. The transport modules always have a new way of leaving wherever they're going. They have um they got little treads on them too, a throwback to one of the early episodes that Chris was obsessed with. Yeah, treads. Um, I do think in the first transport module episode though, they they had these shoots. Did they- these shoots they used to be I think they were like missile something. They converted them over to to accommodate the transport modules. So I do recall that from an earlier episode, but they're looking great. I mean, they're looking spacious, they're looking comfortable, they're looking quick, nimble. And shout yeah. out Crane for replacing them so quickly because last episode, two of them got blown up. So, you know, yeah, Crane doesn't fuck around. He... Foot soldiers are doing work down there. <clears throat> yeah. So into the uh, transport module, Shredder, Bebop, and Rocksteady go, and they, you know, fly up the tunnel to the surface of the Earth. Nice, Andrew. Did you add those in yourself? No. Wow. Oh, I used put his finger up. I was like, "Do you have Do you have something to say?" No, I was pointing at the foot. The I was giving kudos to the foot soldiers. I'm obviously in their laboratory. Yeah, hanging out. (laughs) Star (laughs) base. So, Zach is now returning back to his house, and his older brother, who 
appears to be a giant piece of shit, instantly starts making fun of him and saying, uh, you're stupid, your costume is lame, the turtles aren't real, you're never going to find them, you're a child for believing in them. And Zach is like, actually, the turtles are real, and I did see them, and I'm going to prove it to you if it's the last thing I do. And his older brother, who never gets a name because he's not important enough to have a name, says, if you can prove that the turtles are real, I will eat your costume. That's how that's how much I don't believe that you can prove this. I'm going to eat your whole costume if you can t- if you can show them to me. And Zach goes up to his room and he's pulling out the turtle cum and he's trying to figure out what it is. And he can't, but he says, well, maybe if I can give this back to the turtles, they will accept me as one of their own. So that's mm-hmm. his plan. He, yeah, he falls asleep with the light on. Been there eventually. Yeah. We all do it. It's not a great look, but we've all been there, you know? Yeah. His parents must be, his dad must be really upset with how much electricity he's being wasted right now. Yeah. The, the worst part about uh, leaving your light on is that eventually you'll wake up and you're just in a stupor because you have no idea what time it is, like what happened, where your phone is, because obviously you fell asleep looking at your phone. Yep. And it's just chaos. And you roll over and you look at the clock and it's 2 a.m. Yeah, the best time of day, baby. <laughs> um, on a real note, we're now sleeping with the light back on with the with the newborn. Mm. It's been a while. It's a little distracting. <laughs> not going to lie. Going from no Are light. Are nightlights still a thing for kids? For kids, yeah. My kids are anyway. big on nightlights. I like a good nightlight in the hallway, you know, just like safety, safety lights. Big fan of for safety. I, um, I'm just going to put this up here. I absolutely hate overhead lights. Wow. I hate them. I really? hate lights in the, in the ceiling. I, I just, I don't it must know what be it because is. Because lights? It's, it must be because we legitimately grew up with no overhead lights because that's how old our childhood house was. Yeah, and John's just become us into the darkness. And <laughs> I can't get enough I need the floor lamp that I love. I need the floor lights. lamp that illuminates up. Yeah, the yeah. same Walmart lamp everyone has—the white cone with the one flexible arm. <laughs> yeah, flexi arm. Yeah, yeah. That, I, I love I, overhead lights. I, I literally can't I'm, have enough of them. Yeah, anymore. I'm with Andrew. I can't. There's nothing worse than a dimly lit room. Yeah. Ugh. That you're just rather, sitting in partial darkness. Yeah, literally, people should be leaving my house with sunburn, or else I've failed as a homeowner. Yeah. That's a fact. I, I hate it. I don't know. People just, that turn the lights it. off to watch TV. No. Oh, no, that's yeah, that's kind of crazy. Need a lamp on. Anyway, so Zach Zach falls asleep in his bed thinking about the turtles, um, and at Channel Six, April and Irma are standing next to the newswire. And across comes reports that the Marconi Labs, shout out Marconi Beach, are being robbed or being broken into. And there are reports that a rhinoceros and a warthog are there, which she instantly knows is, as she says, Rocksteady and Bebop in the wrong order. And it still annoys me every time I hear it. Yeah. Yeah, so shout out Marconi for the transatlantic cable. Yeah. Trivia question from a previous episode from Andrew. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. Um, If I were Zach, why wouldn't you mess around with the Turtlecom more, by the way? Yeah. Yeah, it's like when you get a new toy or you find something, you are. And especially for him, who's who seems yeah. so curious and investigative. Yeah, because he, um, I don't think he has mentioned his little detective kit yet, has he? I think he he says he had a junior detective kit, but we don't know what it consists of yeah. yet. Yeah, I mean, if I were him, I feel like I would not be going to bed. I would be thinking around with the turtle calm all night long until my parents came into my room because my light was on and said, "What the fuck are you doing awake?" So that's where my head would be. And it's not a hard thing to figure out 
there's really with I feel like within a couple minutes you could figure out how this thing opens, but yeah. It was it was a big day for him. Maybe he just got too tired and he fell asleep. So April is like Bebop and Rocksteady, fucking at it again. Let me call the turtles. And she calls him up on her turtle com and Donnie picks up. And she tells him what's going on, and he's like, Yep, we're on it. We're gonna do our thing. But at the same time, the turtle com that Zach has rang, and he's listening in. So he now knows it's a communicator, and he hears what the plan is, and he even confirms that he's going to be there too. But luckily, Donnie just thinks it's like an echo, and that the turtle comms are on the whack, and he says, oh, i got to fix these things. But we now know that Zach knows what's going on, so he's probably going to spring into action too. These turtle comms, it kind of hit me this episode. It's like FaceTime. Like 1989 FaceTime. Yeah, like, but it's, it's kind of impressive. It's kind of a it's more of a walkie-talkie though than I think FaceTime because all the channels get the mm. like alert. talking. Yeah, like she yeah, calls one and they all ring. Yeah, which I think is a design flaw because if you're in the midst of battle, like or we've seen April, um, like at work, and she's being discreet. So if the turtles are just on the horn, like, hey, Donnie, fucking, I need more cheese balls in the living room, like shit like that, then that would <laughs> obviously be picked up on by April too. Yeah. Yeah, that so. is a and good it, question if the turtles use it to talk to each other ever, just like fucking around. Yeah, if it's just an emergency line. Also, is April just now communicating openly with the turtles in front of Irma? Irma's like in, she's in the know now. Yeah, I think after the whole attack of the 50 foot Irma a few episodes ago, I think she's now like on a first name basis with the turtles. So I think, I think she's in. She's yeah. lost plausible deniability, as they say. Yeah. So we're at the Marconi Labs now, and Shredder and Bebop and Rocksteady are trying to break into this vault. And Bebop and Rocksteady are hammering away at it. And Shredder is like, listen, guys, fucking simmer down because these things are super, super sensitive. And if you're too rough with them, you're going to break these uh, crystals. And it seems a common theme that everything they take is very fragile. I love how trees, but... rock steady is just fucking right jab to the safe door. Like he would have stayed there all day until that thing busted down. I know, and in my head, I feel like in this episode, at least, Bebop's voice is, is the dumber sounding one than Rocksteady. Mm -hmm. But Rocksteady is consistently like the dumbest of the two, like always. So it's throwing me for a little loop here. And how about Bebop ripping off the safe door? Not even yeah. spinning. I, that wheel was like in this style cartoon when there's like a background drawing and then there's like the objects that are animated and that door was animated. I'm like, okay, this is a twisty knob. It's going to come right open, but nope. Bebop just <laughs> hops on and rips that shit off. Yeah. Rips it off. It goes flying and they instantly just grab a box without even opening it. They're like, these are the capsidium crystals. I know it. I'm just going to take this box and the second they pick them off the shelf, who shows up, John? The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah. The fucking turtles come storming in with April and her camera. She's ready f She's ready to go. She's filming everything. And the turtles say, hey, stop it. We're going to stop you. That's what we're here for. And Bebop and Rocksteady step forward to engage. But at that same instance... Zach comes flying in on his bike from behind the turtles. He runs them over. They go toppling to the ground. And then he hits a railing because there's inexplicably just a pit in the middle of this room. So he hits the railing and he goes flying over the handlebars into the middle of the pit. And he kind of comes skidding to a halt down there. Yeah, not the most graceful entrance. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Zach, uh... I mean, he's so amped. He didn't want to be late, which I respect his punctuality. Um, but definitely, you know, 0 for 2 on grand entrances with the Turtles right yeah. now. 
tough. Great at taking the turtles out, though. So Shredder is like, I don't know who you are, dude, but thank you for the distraction and for helping me out. And he throws down a lever from a machine he's standing next to. And that lever controls a giant pendulum that's just hanging in the middle of this lab, I guess. And it is directly over the pit that Zach is in. So this big, giant pendulum pendulum (laughs) is ready to come crashing down on Zach. And Bebop and Rocksteady step forward and they start laying down some blaster fire. So the turtles are hiding. They can't come out because they get shot by a blaster rifle. And this pendulum is careening towards Zach. And April, sicko April, is like, yeah. this is going to be great footage. She's yeah. just filming. This She's getting off about on to it. Be yeah. yeah, I, I, I was, couldn't yeah. believe that. I wrote, April is cool filming Zach being crushed to death. Like she's doing it for yeah. the views. I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it's kind I was, of like I was shocked about that. Yeah, shocked, jaw open, shocked. Because I think they even zoom in. Like April's just got her camcorder, and she's, you know, they yeah. use the zoom in. And it, cut scene. It's like where the commercial break was. That's yeah. how much of a focus it was. It, she says that, and then presumably they would have cut. Um, so she's standing there. She's ready to watch him get squashed. And it all all appears lost for Zach until Raph steps up. This is Raph's big moment. So he takes control of the situation and he says, I'm going to save this kid. You guys go worry about Shredder and Bebop and Rocksteady. And he jumps onto the pendulum, rides it from the apex of the swing down toward the pit, jumps off before it gets to the low point which there's a scientific name for, and I can't think of it right now. And he grabs Zach, throws him on his back, jumps back onto the pendulum and rides it up and out of the pit. So an incredible move by Raph. I think probably the coolest thing, one of the core things he's done so far in the show. And Maybe one of the only things he's done so far. Yeah, he sure as hell hasn't driven the turtle van still. <laughs> so, I mean, or, or has he? Or has he? We're wearing we'll get there. We're wearing uh, Team Red, so mm. good guys. Let's go, good guys. Red drink. That's why today. I've been theming my beverages toward whoever the weed turtle is for the episode. Yep. We've got a raft drink today. And I won't I don't think it's as cool as whenever that time he threw his size and like pinned I forget what he did, he pinned someone to the wall. That was kind of cool. But anyway, he saves Zach and Donnie is hiding behind this control board and it's on wheels. So he's like, all right, I'm going to kick this thing out. And it goes sliding across the room and it hits Bebop and Rocksteady. And they get taken out. And Shredder is like, motherfucker, here we go again. These guys suck. So he throws another lever, which just controls this giant like lightning machine. I don't know what to call it. But basically, it just starts shooting lightning at the turtles as they run forward. So they have to duck and take cover again. And while that's going on, he, Bebop, and Rocksteady are able to make their escape. And as they're escaping, Rocksteady grabs April's camera because he's like, hey, I don't want this on record. And (laughs) he's trying to yank it away from her, and she kicks him in the shin. And he's jumping up and down, and he's angry that he got kicked in the shin. And he accidentally lets it slide that tomorrow night the Technodrome is coming back to life. And Shredder's like, you fucking idiot. Why would you say that? And he (laughs) grabs them and they make their escape and disappear. There's a lot of electronics in this planetarium. I I don't know. I'm not sure I have a good grasp. I'm not sure I have a good grasp on what the planet. Oh, this is the labs. Yeah. Oh, Marconi labs. Mm. Still a very weird. I don't know what you need a giant pendulum for, what it controls, but very weird lab setup. Yeah. As we know, the lab is where all the accidents happen consistently. Yeah. So the fact that <clears throat> the fact that they got out and there was no mind switch, there was no like cat mutation, any of that stuff is a win. But quite unfortunate because Zach fumbled the entire plan for the turtles. April lost her camcorder footage and the turtles are pissed. 
which yeah. I would be too. I mean, rightfully so. They had this in the bag and Zach screwed it up. Yeah. So April kills this lightning machine. It turns off and Zach is, he's explaining again. So Raf and Donnie have already heard this spiel, but he's like, Hey, I look up to you guys. Like you're the coolest. I want to be just like you. I've got my junior detective kit and you know, I want to fight crime and all this stuff. And the turtles, they're bullshit again. And they're mad. They're pissed that Shredder got off and he's he took off. And as they're kind of talking amongst themselves, Zach is able to sneak out and kind of scoot away. And at that point, they're like, how the hell did he even know we were here? And Raph realizes, oh, he must have my turtle com because I lost it. So that makes sense. He, he knows where we are because he has the turtle com. So at this point, we're going to pause because Zach is one of the worst sidekicks ever. And we're going to do a best worst sidekick edition. <laughs> so play the cool music. We will do best first. I'm going to start with Andrew and then John can go and then I will go last and then we'll repeat for worst. Wow. I've got a great best too. This is, it's just meant to be. So, it's been a while since we did a best worst. I actually couldn't recall the last one that we did. Could you guys? Episode 20 was the last time. Yeah. And what was it? I don't remember. <laughs> I just remember episode 20. Yeah. I don't remember either. It's on the tip um, of my tongue. But it's clear there's really only one answer when it comes to best sidekick. And it is, um, as some would say, man's best friend, the dog. The best sidekick is a dog. That's a fact. They keep your feet warm. They eat your crumbs up off the floor. They alert you most of the time when bad guys are in the house. And <laughs> they're always looking for the good boy. What more could you want in a dog as a sidekick? I, I didn't think of that at all. That's mm -hmm. that's the best gold. answer. It's gold. Oh, yeah. That's an okay answer. It is, I mean, more of a cat person myself, but Cats are notably a terrible sidekick, if I'm being yeah. honest. Yeah. Um, but yeah, dogs are great. Can't argue there. I rest my case. John? Yeah. There's really not much to say. Dogs are great. So <laughs> shout out Hubert. He's yeah, shout right out next Porter. To me, actually, as any sidekick would be. Yep. <laughs> you know. All right. Yeah, I definitely didn't have dogs. I actually had, I have a very long list. Ooh. Of good side. You're gonna do the Andrew move and just no, read them all off. I'm gonna, till one... I'm gonna save it till the end. Wow. But my number one sidekick, a little character known as Tails, Ooh, from Sonic and Tails. Nice. Tails, while not incredibly strong or fast, is incredibly important to help Sonic and to help you beat the video game. He can help you fly. If he if he gets you know dead or dies, he comes right back to you. He's very um, very important in the underwater level, if I remember correctly, where he sucks up the air bubble and helps you breathe. Um, I got tails. Tails is good. I love tails. Tails is better than Sonic. Yeah, I knew Andrew would like that one. Yeah. So tails, but he could fly too. Yeah. He's got a sweet... I think he's got red shoes, right? I know Sonic does, but doesn't... I think he's got red. He's also one of the few orange, like, heroes, superheroes, what whatever you want to call him. He's a fox, isn't he? He's a fox. Mm. Yeah. His name is yeah. Miles Tails. He's a fox. Wow. Yeah. Is he the best of all the sidekicks, though? Is he the best? That's No, because I'm going to give you the best sidekick, and his name... Is Luigi. Ooh, I knew you were going Luigi. So Luigi, though often lamented, is the ideal sidekick because he is the better Mario brother. He's taller. He's more handsome. He has a better mustache. And he never seeks the spotlight, which is what you want in a sidekick. He knows his role. He just lets Mario get the princess and take all the glory and he's there when player one dies and player two has to step up and make the run. So he can do everything Mario can do. He's green, which is a cooler color. And 
when the dirty work needs to be done and you need to be in a mansion, a haunted mansion, Luigi's there to do it. <laughs> so shout out Luigi. Chris, would a good sidekick have his own video game though? That seems a little yes, bit too, John. I want the spotlight. No. Wow. That is Luigi doing what no other character in Mario's Mushroom Kingdom wants to do. And that's going to King Boo's house. I'll be honest, I never played Luigi's Mansion, but I think he just goes into a haunted mansion and like probably rescues somebody. So, yeah. Well, I, well see Mario there. I have a few things to say about that. Number one, uh, I never even knew there was a Luigi's Mansion until, speak of shout outs here, Sean, who I talked about last episode, huge Luigi's Mansion on the Switch guy. And I got to see it. It actually looks legit. Like you, there's a whole lot of, it's like an open world interaction game. So very cool. Thanks for showing me, Sean. But uh, red is better than green. That's just a fact. We know that. This is the wrong podcast to say that on, buddy. No, I, <laughs> to the grave. The, the original Ninja Turtles, what color were their bandanas, Chris? Red. Okay, oh. let me ask you this. Who's the coolest Power Ranger? The green one. The red. Blue. There's, I, I'm going to say this, there's a green Power Ranger. I literally had no idea. Yeah, he's a special guy like the white Power Ranger. Did you, white Power? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if, you, if you guys watch, trying to, I mean, you said the blue is the best. Watch the new Power Rangers movie, and you will hate the blue Ranger more than any of the other Power Rangers because he's annoying. So, Billy. His name is Billy, Billy or something. Bill. Yeah, he's a weenie. Um, speaking of Mario, though, I have to say, have you guys seen the new Super Mario Bros. movie? No, but I want to really badly. Okay. Uh, craziest thing. It just came out a month ago. You can already buy it on, you can already buy it on demand or buy the DVDs in Target. So wow. I don't know what Nintendo did there, because I feel like it just came out in May. Yeah, but it I just came out in theaters. That. Yeah, I feel like yeah so anyway i don't know what's going on there but overall i would give it an eight out of ten. Eight out of ten what of uh controversy over chris pratt's voice yeah what is the deal with the chris pratt controversy like why does everyone hate him i don't know um he cheat, like he cheated he on his wife or whatever or I ex-wife or something well, he, probably good i don't know if he did or not but yeah there's a little bit of resentment because that and then he got super religious and then is also like conservative which in hollywood is not good for you and then yeah i think people resented because he got super fit for the zero dark 30 movie and then once he started to get more popular he, he just you know wore out his welcome well, also speaking of controversy i going back to sonic do you guys remember how ugly this first sonic was for the movie that so ugly that they had to go back and reanimate everything yeah, because of Twitter. People were yeah. just roasting the movie. So fun Easter egg. If you watch the Chippendale movie that came out, Ugly Sonic is in the Chippendale movie as like a uh, joke. It's funny. Isn't Chippendale like strippers? No, Chippendale was the Rescue, rescue Rangers. Rangers. What? Ch -ch -ch Chippendale. Yeah. Rescue You're thinking Rangers. of Chippendales. Yeah. Like Chip and Dale are a cartoon. They're the uh, chipmunks, whatever yeah, they are. You can see how I'm confused. Yeah. Well, you pick Sonic, so reflects poorly on you. Well, Luigi was garbage. He's actually on my worst list. No. It's because John is. I you're, swear to God. John is a Mario hog, a Super <laughs> Mario World hog. I'll just say that. Chris, I, I, I'm just going to say this. You didn't even pick the best green sidekick in Mario. The best Yoshi's green not sidekick a sidekick. Is Yoshi. Yeah, he is. No, he's not a sidekick. John. John Mario dude, treats Yoshi John like a piece of Yoshi. shit. Yoshi is like John's favorite thing ever. I feel like. Yeah. Is Yoshi Yoshi's only awesome. the green one? Who are the other Yoshis called? What are they called? The yellow and red and the blue. I don't know. The Yoshi well, crime syndicate. But, uh, spoiler alert. <laughs> Watch the yeah the Yoshi crumbs and watch um Super Mario Brothers to the end. Speaking of Yoshi, wow, yeah, spoiler. Does he get punched in the head and drop down an abyss? Because that's what happens in the game. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> but he always comes. Yoshi. Right. Just eat enough apples and you get a life. 
or just die and what would you take over so andrew oh, what's your would, worst wouldn't a sidekick side die for his side punch anyways or side piece um all right well i actually had a hard time thinking of bad sidekicks believe it or not um i would have probably said luigi but i didn't think of that um instead disrespect luigi gets unbelievable i've got another green green guy uh do you guys remember the animated batman cartoon uh kind of i think there's a couple I know the one you're talking about, though. Yeah, like the classic one that everyone references. Um, yeah. Apparently has a super high score on IMDb, but I do not like Robin from Robin's Bat- cool. Batman. The I kid think, Robin is lame. The yeah, dude, he's, is cool. he's the kid Robin in that. Yeah. If I'm thinking of the right one, it's the kid Robin that's like the skinny, tiny, like younger, I don't know if it's younger brother yeah. or adopted kid, whatever. I do not like that Robin. Sorry. It's lame. Kids shouldn't be fighting crime. Teenagers are where I draw the line. <laughs> yeah, so. good save, Andrew. <laughs> good save. Yeah, we don't need toddlers yeah. out here. Fighting. Robin, I never really knew what he did. I'm sure, like, I, I even know actually, like, the original Robin in the original Batman comic book was killed off. Like, they did this vote. I saw this on Today I Learned, I think. Like, in the 70s, they they had everyone phone in, call this number if you want to kill Robin off, call this number if you want to save him. And they majority of people wanted to kill him off. Died. Unbelievable. Yeah, they killed oh. him. He didn't die. He was murdered by the people. So clearly <laughs> not a public. good not a good sidekick. Yeah. That's all I, I agree with that. I, I had Robin uh, as my worst along with Luigi. But I will go with my third pick here as the worst sidekick. Donkey from Shrek. Ooh. What? Yeah. I just think Donkey is like, I think he's kind of annoying, if I'm being honest, as he a is. character. And he's getting he's his own just, movie, though. Do you know that? Speak of one upping, yeah, sidekicks, I think he's getting his own movie. Wow. It's just so, you know, like, he's Donkey? like funny sometimes, but it's just, I don't know. He's too loud. I don't like Donkey. He's my sidekick. He's always fucking shit up, too. And saving the I mean, day at the same he did time. did save the day with the dragon, though. In movie one, unbelievable that you don't like Donkey. You think Luigi's an unpopular pick? Donkey is a bad sidekick. Terrible pick. I don't, I don't like. Donkey. I mean, it's hard to pick a bad sidekick other than <laughs> other than Luigi and Robin. Uh, yeah, but I. So I tell went, us what. No one's gonna know what this is, but me, because I am choosing a sidekick that I created, and his name is Miracle Whip. So everybody knows the legendary duo of Wonder Bread and Miracle Whip. The two, Andrew, maybe you can insert a slide on the YouTube here of what they look like. But Wonder Bread is a superhero, a piece of bread that gained magical powers and fights crime. And his sidekick, Miracle Whip, was originally drawn in the comics to be the clumsiest sidekick ever. So he would show up and mess everything up and accidentally ruined the plan. So Miracle Whip is the worst sidekick. Shout out to me for inventing him. Obviously, if there's any trademark issues, I didn't steal the name. <laughs> so don't come after me. Shout out Miracle Did you Whip. have anything else on your list? No, John, I didn't because he <laughs> is the worst. I had um I did have Robin. I don't like Robin. I don't like young Robin. And on my best list i i almost took pepper from salt and pepper because nice. pepper blues clues is no i'm talking the actual oh, <laughs> oh. yeah or yeah i guess you could go blues clues yeah. i'm going the actual wow shout out blue for a sidekick too but um yeah the actual blues seasoning a great one nice. i don't think pepper is a is a sidekick though yeah salt's the main no. salt's the main guy unfortunately it's I would, salt and pepper. yeah yeah you don't say pepper and salt. We know, we know the order matters. Um, well, I think that reminds me, Chris's pick. I can't say much about Miracle Whip because I don't know him all that well, but Great I will pick, say buddy. it does remind me of the tick cartoon 
which I don't know if you guys recall because we were very young during that as well. But the Tick has a sidekick. He's like Mo- like Mothman or something. Arthur the Moth. No, yeah. the Flea, isn't it? The Flea. Yeah, maybe it's the Flea. Whatever, whoever it is, he reminds me of Miracle Whip, like a clumsy screwing stuff up. There's a tick. There's a new tick series. I think it's on Amazon Prime. Yeah, I started watching it. Like rebooted it. Is it yeah. any good or no? I think it's got potential. It's it's comedic, like this podcast. Not as good as this podcast, obviously, but uh, pretty good. <laughs> All right, Shout I got, I I got a long. The moth. I don't think he's. The I got I got a long list of uh, sidekicks. All right, are we do an honorable mention: best or worst. Best. Go best. I don't first. have any, go worst. I don't have any other worst. It was hard, really hard for me to think of a bad sidekick. Um, how about Pinky and the Brain, which is the dumb one? Pinky, Pinky, Pinky would be which one. is weird because Brain's the lead in that, but it is Pinky and the Brain. Hmm. Yeah. So Pinky Donald would be... D- or uh, not Donald, uh, fucking Daffy Duck. I don't think Daffy's a sidekick. To Bugs, yeah. He's the... I don't think so. Mm. I guess they're like enemies. They're co-equals, yeah. It's like saying like the Roadrunner and Coyote, like one's not a sidekick of the other. Yeah, that's true. What about Ren and Stimpy? I I don't think one's a sidekick. It's like Toe Jam and Earl. (sighs) Equals. Yeah, Earl's the sidekick. Or like Patrick and SpongeBob. Yeah. Yeah. Equals. Patrick, great sidekick. Wow, that would have been a good one. Yeah, I know. He's not a sidekick. But Barnacle yeah. Boy. Chris, and did you have any other worst? No, I didn't. My, I had a very short list. Cats. Cats would be on yeah, that side. Cats. <laughs> um, yeah. What yeah, about what best? Best? There's a lot of best out there. Um, Chewbacca. Yeah, Chewie's good. That's a really good one. Chewy. Yeah, chew, chew. I had uh meatballs, spaghetti and meatballs. Ooh. Tons of meatball guy. Yeah, I, I'm a big meatball. I had uh Pikachu. Yeah, see, Great I was thinking sidekick. That, yeah, I was thinking about Pikachu from the Pokemon. Which I, I did just see that Ash is now like retired. The character yeah, is Ash gone. Is done. There is no more. Just, I mean Ash had a had a run. Ash and Pikachu. So I was, um, I began really back into Pokemon cards here. This is like big brain stuff, but playing, you know, playing the new video game, collecting Pokemon cards. I was like, oh, let me go back and watch these, uh, Pokemon episodes, man. You want to talk about a lot of episodes. There's like, they did one every week for like (laughs) 17 years. Yep. There's so many episodes of Pokemon. No better episode than when Ash can't beat Lieutenant Surge at the gym and he is thinking about evolving Pikachu. And ultimately he gives Pikachu the choice and Pikachu says no. And then they triumph at the end. Mm. Great episode. Yeah. So I had Pikachu. I had Garth. Ooh. From wow. Danny Garth. <laughs> Garth. you know wow. what's funny speaking of wayne's world i just got a rogue uh i got a rogue text from a colleague of mine because my youngest was born on the same day as mike myers wow. so i got a wayne's world well rogue rain wayne's world reference which i completely knew obviously because you guys watch that every single yeah. day for like four years straight um but yeah, Wayne's World, phenomenal. And Garth is such a good sidekick. Great sidekick. Yeah. yeah. Hilarious. What and then I had mean? um the last one I had was Skeeter. Ooh. Mosquito yeah, Valentine. Skeeter's good. Yeah, Mosquito Valentine. Okay. Except another um, great show, Doug. Yeah, except Skeeter Did when he know? went, remember when he got moved up to college, like early? Do you guys remember that episode where he was like super smart? Yeah, he got moved up yeah. to college, and then he he kind of wasn't a good friend to Doug anymore. I gotta I gotta give him some shit for that. Mm. Some would argue Pork Chop might be the sidekick in that show. How about um sidekick? Cat Dog? Cat Dog. Who's the sidekick? What about Daggett and Yeah Norbert? Norbert, yeah. Angry Beavers, great show. 
How about um what John? What's um the caddy for Tiger Woods that like won all the majors with him? Joe Nagava. And they got fired. That guy. Scotty Pippen. I mean, maybe the greatest well, not of anymore. All time. He's a he's on the bad side. He hates Michael Jordan because his yeah, son is dating his ex wife. Yeah, I didn't see that. But Pip was a good sidekick for a while. What about Gerald from Hey Arnold? Speaking of, he wore a Scotty Pippen jersey, technically. Yeah. So, a lot of sidekicks. So, <clears throat> the Turtles have left Marconi Labs. Bebop, Shredder, and Rocksteady got away. Zach was able to sneak off. So, the Turtles are basically left with nothing for all their efforts. And we go back, uh, the Turtles, they're heading back to the sewer, driving the van. We don't know who's driving yet. And this was actually interesting because I always wondered, like, how do the Turtles get the van into the sewer? So they go into an exposed sewer pipe, gate, whatever you want to call it. And tailing them is Zach on his bike. So they drive into the sewer. They get out. It's unclear from how they got out who was driving. Leonardo. So it was Leo. How do you know? Because he just the door that he got out of indicated that he was. He got out of the sliding door. You would think that he get out. Whatever. I thought it was unclear who was driving, but Leo gets out and he's like, "Fucking feet are all sticky. There's shit on the floor in the turtle van." Mikey, (laughs) what the fuck? And Mikey's like, "Hey, it wasn't me. I haven't eaten pizza in that thing for at least a month, so don't blame me." And they kind of go walking down the sewer. And once they disappear down the tunnel, Zach shows up and he's like, wow, I hope my plan worked because I put this special paint on the floor of the turtle van. And now I'm going to throw on my ultraviolet goggles from my junior detective kit. And he can see the footprints from the turtles and where they're walking. So just an incredible, incredible move by Zach here to figure out where the turtles are going. Yeah. Big brain move for sure. Yeah. For an almost 14 year old. Great. Making moves left and right. I will say Chris mentioned this a minute or two ago, the turtle van, great entrance. I love it. I love that. Uh, Not, I do not love how easy it was for Zach to just tail them. So clearly the turtles are, you know, maybe uh, a little bit, too Aloof. not aware, yeah. Too not aware of their surroundings. If a, if you know, a check 14, your mirrors uh, while you're driving, yeah. hmm. or drive a little faster. How the fuck fast is this kid's bike? <laughs> I know. So fast, it needs to be registered with a license plate. <laughs> Clearly, yeah, yeah. That part, yeah. Coming up, I was like, <laughs> we'll get fucking there. holy shit, he's got a plate on that thing. <laughs> so he's trailing the turtles into the sewer. Meanwhile, Shredder's getting his ass chewed out by Crane. So he's back at the Technodrome. Crane is like. I mean, come on, dude. What the hell? Can you control your stupid mutant sidekicks? Why would you let them tell the turtles what's going on or tell April? Um, And he knows. He's like, listen, these motherfuckers are going to figure out what we're doing here. It's only a matter of time. So you need to go stop them because your guys screwed up. And Shredder's like, oh, it's funny that Bebop and Rocksteady are my mutants when they mess up. And when they're doing good stuff, they're all your guys. So... They are, though. Like, Shredder, he's trying to shirk responsibility for Rocksteady and Bebop. But well, it's like, you created them. They're yours. Yeah, but it was Krang's idea to mutate two of his own henchmen. So, while Shredder did it, Krang's the one that floated the, the idea. So, they're both kind of guilty. So, Shredder. I knew... I knew Andrew walked right into my mousetrap because I knew he was going to bring that up. And my counter argument is, yes, it was Crane's idea to mutate them. But in season two, when they were with Crane in Dimension X, they came back and they were as good as they've ever been. They were crack shots. They were on top of their shit. And slowly, since they've come back from Dimension X, their skills have eroded. Rocksteady is the biggest idiot, I think, in the entire show at this point, at least mentally. So I blame that on Shredder because since he's 
taken them back under his wing. They've slowly progressed in their skills. I mean, that's true. But Krang is back now. They're all a big happy family. So, yeah, but Krang's Krang's got the rock soldiers. He's got the foot soldiers. He's he's doing the a whole lot of nothing. A whole lot of nothing in the Technodrome. You uh, can't get the a AC whole running. A lot of nothing. Did we just not compliment the new transport modules? You think those just appear out of thin air? Seems like it. He's tracking. He's doing that, and he's tracking planetary alignments when it's taking all of Donnie's focus to figure that out. So he's. So doing... I knew you were going to bring this up. We fucking know about where the planets are going to be and how they're going to line up millennia before they happen. We kn- we know what comets are coming around every half century. We know that shit. It's not. It wasn't that difficult to predict. When you say we know, like you get told about that stuff, you're not figuring yeah. it out. I know. Well, somebody's got to figure out when it's happening. That's Crank. No, it's NASA. <laughs> and I will. I don't. An aside. I don't think it's rare for Mars, Earth, and the Moon to line. Like that just seems like it probably happens all the time. So. I don't know how rare this actual occurrence is, but it seemed like from Donnie's research, it was like once every hundred years. Do we, I, when you think about the moon orbiting earth, where do you think, like, to me, it's like above, it's like a halo. No, it's at the equator in my brain. Really? Yeah. When you think everything about the moon is orbiting earth. It's around the equator. Yeah, everything in my brain is on the same plane in space, and it's all centered at the center mass of each planet. So, and if you have multiple moons, they're in a line. So, that's like wrong. Jupiter has nineteen <laughs> moons. I know that's wrong, but that I picture it with the poster in the science classroom. Everything just lined up. Hmm. I would say it's got to vary depending on time of day, time of year. Yeah, well, obviously, but how yeah, do you are talking just in your brain. <laughs> well, I don't know because the Earth is also like off axis, right? What is that called? Like the tilt that we're on? Yeah, we're tilted axis. Yeah, whatever it's called. So in my mind, that throws off that like the moon's never in the same place twice ever. So hmm. maybe it is rare. That's a good John. question to ask people, I think, though. Where do you picture the moon? John's just looking up at the sky, so he assumes it's above his head. I'm a simple man. Yeah, that's, I guess it's not bad. <laughs> that makes sense, logically. John's a flat earther. Um, all right, so Shredder got his ass chewed out, and back in the turtle layer, the turtles are, I'm going to call it powwowing with uh, Splinter. They're in his meditation room. They're kind of all sitting in a circle, and they're trying to figure out like what the hell's going on, and they're trying to piece everything together. Why are Bebop and Rocksteady robbing this place? The Marconi Labs, what's going on? So Donnie, just out of the blue, is like, hey, the crystals that they took can convert the right kind of light into energy. So if the conjunction's happening, that special light from this conjunction would generate enough power to lift the Technodrome. So he figures out the first half of the plan. And they're kind of talking through this. He has this epiphany and then they hear a noise in a different room. So they kind of all jump up and they get their weapons out and they're kind of hiding on either side of the doorway, waiting for this intruder to come in. And who is it, Andrew, that comes strolling in? Little Zach, the fifth turtle. Little Zach. So he strolls in. The turtles are again in an uproar like, Jesus Christ, this kid won't leave us alone. But before they can really tear into him, Splinter welcomes Zack and says, you know what, Turtles, you should actually be humbled by this kid because this little boy was able to do what nobody else has been able to do. And he tracked you all the way to the sewer. So maybe get off your high horses and give this kid some credit because he figured you out. In fact, he says, welcome, my son. Yeah. And... Not only that, but the immediate next sentence, or as Chris mentioned, he says he refers to the turtles as his students. So he calls the stranger, his son, and his children students. 
ultimate wow. fucking rat tail he of the face. Absolutely roasts the turtles. Yeah. He I didn't does. catch that. That's some that's fucking, kind of like psychological warfare from someone. Yeah, some real real deal. So once this little interchange happens, like the mood is completely changed down in the lair. And Zach is like, hey, I have your turtle calm. I'm going to return it. But before I do, watch this cool trick. And he plugs in his junior detective, Mike, to the bottom of the turtle comm, and it sends off the worst feedback noise you've ever heard in your life. And everyone's covering their ears, and it's screeching. And he's like, hey, isn't this cool? And they're like, yeah, that's awesome. Stop doing it, please. And he unplugs it and hands the turtle comm back to Raph. And then he gets the experience of a lifetime. So there are Leo who has done a 180 and is now, it appears, sucking, sucking up to Splinter. Because <laughs> he's like, hey, Zach, how about we give you a tour of the turtle layer? Would you like that? And, of course, Zach would like that. So it goes into this little, what reminded me of, like, an 80s movie montage scene where mm-hmm. Zach is doing an activity with each of the turtles that kind of represents who they are. So he's eating pizza with Mikey, uh, and we get a new pizza flavor here. John, do you remember what it is? Uh, yes, it's anchovy, anchovy and hot fudge. However, it's the it's the Plink special from when they... It was I from, think there's a difference. From last episode. Yeah. One was anchovy and chocolate, chocolate fudge, and plink. this is anchovy and hot fudge. So to me, hot fudge is what you put on a Sunday. Chocolate fudge is just regular fudge. So I think yeah. those are two different well, pizzas. Yeah. Okay. That's, I mean, yeah, that's fine. I, I took just took it as Mikey had ordered from Plinks. So I may have. I'm happy to. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. I didn't catch that. So do we want to call it a new pizza flavor? Yeah. Yeah. It's gross, but okay. I'm with you. I To me, hot fudge is like the liquid stuff you put on ice cream. Um, whereas... Chocolate fudge is more of the solid, like fancy can't. Yeah. Not to be confused, hot fudge sauce with the candy shell that you can coat soft serve ice cream with. So a little aside, uh Dairy Queen, you suck because you got rid of the cherry dipped cone. They which did is bullshit. Did they? During COVID? Yeah. They replaced it. They just wake within the last week, replaced it with churro flavor. I mean, disappointing. Churro, though. That's like, do you want to talk about? Yeah, something great delicious? replacement, but I don't know. I, mean, I like the classics. You couldn't beat a vanilla soft serve dipped in cherry, but what are you going to do? So, Zach's eating pizza with Mikey, and then he's doing some training with Leo. I think he's like spin kicks a dummy or something during the training room. And then. I forget what he does with, is it Raff or Don? He does something with Donnie, I think, after. I forget what it is. Donnie's in the lab. He's like got the beakers out, and they're they're looking under a microscope. And Donnie's like, oh, I'm trying to find a container that can stand up to Michelangelo's pizza sauce, like so it doesn't disintegrate or some shit like that. Oh, yeah, that's right. So, you know, Zach, having the time of his life, this little tour ends, and they kind of all gather, and Splinter is like, listen – you're cool, but you have to promise us that you're never, ever going to endanger yourself to try and help us. Like, we got this. Go back to your house. You got your little experience. Now, go away. So that ends the little sewer feel-good scene with Zach. He's officially accepted, it seems like. Meanwhile, we go back to Shredder and company. And Shredder is in his own hideout now. He's in a abandoned building and he's with bebop and rocksteady and they're examining some surveillance footage of zach tailing the turtles into the sewer so this is crane and shredder's magical camera system again but to john's earlier point he is able to pick up the license plate on the back of zach's bike his pedal bike it's not even a moped or anything and (laughs) he's like oh I got him now. He calls the police and says, police officer, I found a bike. I want to return. 
and here's the plate number. Can you please give me the address so I can return it? And whoever's running dispatch, just not doing their job because they just give the address out right away. And Shredder says, thank you. And he turns to Bebop and Rocksteady and says, all right, we know where this kid lives. Go kidnap him because we need him in order to stop the turtles. Tough move, kind of a diabolical but... plan to kidnap a kid. Yeah, tough move <laughs> to the cops just ratting him out, like hand over his address. Wasn't even, didn't even need to really make an effort, Shredder. Yeah, how about uh, how about oh, just give us the bike and we'll return it, not give a stranger at someone else's address. Yeah, on a although registered bike. Although, shout out to phone books, who publicly listed, who publicly doxed everybody, their name, their phone number, and their home address. Wow, um, that's kind of fucked up if you really think about it. <laughs> Hello, pages that like no. Yeah, they were the enemy. I mean, they were they were the ones behind the uh, what is it, Iron Curtain, right? The <laughs> Red Curtain, Soviet War. Is the Red what, Curtain the Yellow Pages? <laughs> what is this what a conspiracy? The fuck is going on here? Oh yeah, I'm just fucking with you. I'm saying they were the know. real enemies. <laughs> They're the mutual oh, enemy yeah. of, of the world. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking, what if you got? I was thinking today. Because I'm getting sick of cell phones, to be honest. There's just too much communication. So I was like, what if you just got landlines, like you and your friends, and then you only gave each other your numbers, and you just knew if your landline was ringing, it was one of your friends? Like, what would happen? And, and then I was thinking, like, if I got a landline now, would are there still telemarketers calling those things? Like, do you have to list your, your number? I have a, a lamb. I have a home phone number. Yeah, but has anyone ever called phone it? plugged into it? Because I have a technically I have a home phone number, but I, I've never plugged a phone in. Yeah, because with uh, my cable provider, the triple play package includes cable, internet, and phone. And I'll be watching TV sometimes, and it says you have an incoming call from X Y Z number. I'm like, don't you know what this is? <laughs> Interesting. Would that be cool though? Just landline people? No. Yeah, it, it's like you're you're on the bleeding edge of being on like twenty years behind yeah. in times. You know what I mean? Like you're you're one upping modern technology by going back to the old school technology. Yeah, it's like what cell phones originally were for. I'm now using landlines for. Yeah, it's like a circle. Yeah, it's a circle of times life. a flat yeah. circle. Yeah, but when's the last time you talked on the phone with your friends? That's what I'm saying. Bring it back. Imagine how excited you would be if you knew every time that phone rang, it was somebody you actually wanted to talk to. Or you know what else? The other thing that I would look forward to is if somebody called the TurtleCom, speak of landlines, somebody should pick up their landline and call, visit uh, TMNTShellcast.com, click on the green button, and leave us a goddamn voicemail, Dave. <laughs> Because someone we know people are listening to these yeah, episodes. It's a fact. John, shout out John Flynn. Speaking of doxing people, uh, <laughs> I know you're a fan of the YouTube. In fact, you made it that statement. Chris, also a fan of the YouTube. Uh, some would sure. say the best way to watch the pod. The only way to watch the pod, in fact. But it may still be the best way. Um, other thing I want to mention. I listen to and watch TMNT Shellcast in 1.5 speed. I don't know if you guys have ever dabbled in a little bit, a little bit quicker um, experience, but it cuts out the ums, cuts out the pauses. You know, you can watch another podcast 50% faster. I think it's pretty good. My opinion. I, don't think, it's, not... I think it's actually 67% faster. Not. 50% faster. 1.5 speed, it's 50% faster. Yeah, but you don't watch it 50% faster. What? That would indicate that you'd be watching it in half the time, which is wrong. No, that's 200%. <clears throat> yeah. I'm saying 150. Yeah. 
Fifty percent faster. <laughs> John's lost. <laughs> John's lost in the percentages right now. He's just well, either, you to death. Either way, um, Pearlcom. I just want for any new listener, new viewer, um, you have the opportunity to interact with us. Leave us a voicemail. We will play it. It can be a question. It can be a comment. It can be a fact. I don't know. Anything you want, call in. We will play it on air. Also, you can find that uh, in the show notes. This is the other thing I haven't talked about in a while. We have lots of links in our show notes. So if you're on Spotify, I don't know. What's the easiest way in Spotify to, sh- to pull up the show notes, John? Just click on it twice. Yeah, click just more. click on the episode yeah. description. Yeah, do that. Uh, same with YouTube. Intuitive. YouTube, there's a little more or like arrow. <clears throat> click on that. You'll have everything you could ever want from TMT Shellcast in the show notes. So just how do we know if reminder. we get a voicemail? Where does that where does that go? Like we get an email. Get an email. Yeah, we get an email. Interesting. Okay. Thank you, Andrew, for that public service announcement. We need a fucking turtle com at some point. Dear God, please. Can I just okay. can I just <laughs> can I just say this <laughs> right now? I'm I, I threw a couple stickers in my backpack. I'm so excited to just stick them on something in my trip to California. I'm on like how... famous landmarks. Not like what the like, you know what I'm saying? Like famous like Dinky's Donuts or Pink's Donuts, whatever that place is. The big donut. What? You know, the, it's in a bunch of movies. It's like a donut shop that's got a big donut on the roof. I think it's called Pink's. You guys, no where is that? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. It's in, it's in, I think it's maybe in Los Angeles or something. It's in oh. California somewhere. I thought you were like the Chicago Bean. Boom. Fucking sticker. TMNT right on it. Yep. Washington Monument. Boom. Fun, well, I'm not going to get into fun Washington Monument facts. But where were we? So, okay. So, Zach, they wrap up their little love fest at the sewers. And oh, we did that. Bebop and Rocksteady. Where, hold on, where the fuck are we? <laughs> we are at <laughs> oh, yeah, so Shredder. Oh, yeah, on his plate. Yeah. Shredder's got the plate. He tells Bebop and Rocksteady to go uh, to go get Zach. And they show up there, and they throw, they do it old school. They throw a ladder up to his bedroom window, and they start climbing this thing. But he hears him coming. He wakes up, and he looks outside, and he's like, damn it, they're coming to get me. What do I do? So he hides in his closet with, you know, like a toy pile and Bebop and Rocksteady pop through the window and they're like, Oh, he's not in his bed. Let's, let's search, see if he's in here. And they open the closet and they see all these toys, but they don't see him in there. And apparently that's all the searching they do because they're like, well, there's just toys in this closet. I guess we should get out of here, but not before. Go ahead, John. I think it's it's a little bit of an homage to E.T. There was an E.T. Scene, toy. There was an E.T. toy. But there's also a scene in the movie E.T. where the, a very similar circumstance happens where they're searching for E.T. And he's got him like dressed up as a stuffed animal kind of thing. And Zach rides a bike like Elliot from E.T. And... Chris, you skipped over my favorite part about this whole scene. When Bebop and Rocksteady climb through the window, they stumble and they make a loud bang. And then they each look at each other and go, shh, which to me is just great. Like, yeah, obviously you're going to shush each other and you got to be quiet. I didn't even remember that part. So it's a good catch. Also, so lastly here, one more thing. I asked at least this uh, earlier this week. Do you have in your house if a hiding spot that you would be almost certain no one would be able to find you if they were looking for you? No. Yeah. I have a yes to. You I have a panic uh, on? I'd have to kill you if I told you, John. <laughs> <laughs> No, not a I think if anyone just... looked hard enough, they could find any like they could find anyone anywhere. My the so the situation that I posed was there's 
an intruder in your house and you can hide like you can you have enough time to get into your spot and they're looking but there's they can't just look forever like the cops are on their way and so they have a limited time to look for you so do you think you could like wait out however long you're looking for you i have one spot i think it'd be questionable but i think i could make it if the lights weren't on so yeah (laughs) Okay, okay, that's all I needed to know. Great question, John. So, before they leave Zach's room, Bebop and Rocksteady are like, hey, we might as well just say our entire plan here before we go, because why not? So, they basically say, man, he's not here, but it doesn't matter because we're going to take these crystals, we're going to bring them to the planetarium, and we're going to lay a trap for the turtles, because we know they're coming. And Then they skedaddle down the ladder, they get out of here, and Zach... Once they leave, pops out and he's like, man, I should probably tell the turtles what's about to happen, but I can't because Shredder made me promise not to endanger myself. So in, and this logically makes no sense. So he's like, you know what, instead of telling them, I'm just going to go to the planetarium and that'll be planned for right now. So he just leaves to go to the planetarium, but doesn't give the turtles a heads up on what's going on because he figures out, he's like, Hey, they'll figure it out eventually. And I'll just meet him there. I I have a question here. And maybe I just missed this. How does Zach still have a turtle gun? They didn't take it back. Yeah. Why, why why didn't they take it back? I thought he gave it back. Didn't he? Didn't he? He he was going to do his thing. He was going to, but then he plugged it in and they forgot about it and he went home with it. Oh, so, yeah, Mr. Morality, I don't want to, you know, disturb and break my promise to Shredder, but I stole their turtle con. Or wait, did he give it back? And they give it back to him later? I don't know. No, he gets one at, later was it on, in the but scene? he didn't. Was it in the scene or no? I don't think he no? has a turtle Yeah, it was. Con. It's not in the scene. Yeah, it is. It definitely is. I, I thought it was the sleeping one before, because I think that's the whole reason he has to go there is he can't get in contact with them anymore. So he's physically oh, he, going there to tell him. He's like, oh, I need to call because he's he has this morality question about how he he's, needs to call and let the turtles know, but he doesn't. He's like looking at the turtle comment. He's like, but I can't yeah, I use this right, because I promise a shredder. Maybe. And again, the logic in that is flawed. Like I can't endanger myself by telling them what's going to happen. That doesn't make any sense to me. But anyway, he. Is like, I, I'm just going to go I'll meet him there, basically. So, Krang now is talking to Shredder, and Shredder's like, hey, we didn't fucking get the kid. What do you want me to tell you? But it doesn't really matter because we don't need him. Um, and Krang's like, fucking can't do anything I say. You suck. So, because you're botching this, Shredder, I'm going to send you some foot soldiers to make sure that there's no way in hell that you screw the plan up this time. Because you didn't do the one thing I asked you to. So here's some backup to help you out. And off go contingent of foot soldiers up to meet John. Is like snapping his fingers or something. Mm-hmm. And up they go to meet with uh, Shredder. Yeah, these foot. I just laughed because last episode when you had mentioned everyone that gets assigned to Shredder's detail just gets Guard killed is, yeah, true. yeah just end up dying so it's like it's just a death sentence for these guys it is nice to see him though i mean we've had quite a few foot soldiers in the last like three or four episodes here we even had rock soldiers not too long ago it is weird that crane maybe it's because like the rock soldiers are his more than the foot soldiers but he's always sending foot soldiers to do stuff and not rock soldiers unless he's personally involved yeah, I think it is that reason because the rock soldiers are from Dimension X and they're his people. Foot soldiers and they're like living beings. Yeah, and foot soldiers were um, robots that Shredder made after he came to the U.S. So are we, and I guess this goes to the history of Crank because in the first, the first time we meet him, we were and he was like expelled from his body. So he essentially was a rock person. Where I don't we know. have to assume, right? Why would we assume that? Because he was he was the leader of the Rock Army, and then like there was a disagreement in Dimension X, and he was expelled from his body. That's why he's just a brain. 
I, I think he was. I think that means rock people have brains. I, I assumed it was like android body. Like he's always had an android body, uh, and he, that's what he wanted to get back to. But I don't know. Maybe. Anyway, that was a tangent. So off go these mm-hmm. foot soldiers to help with Shredder, and we're back now to the lair where the turtles are. They're still trying to figure out the rest of this plan. So Donnie's kind of talking out loud, and he's like, "Well, we know." that they need this energy from the planetary alignment or conjunction to raise the technodrome. But in order to raise the technodrome, they're going to need a lot of space. So I I think it's maybe Leo or Raph who pieces it together finally and says, well, where's a lot of space, the park, how are they going to harness the energy? Oh, the planetarium is across the street. So they must be going to the planetarium. That's where we'll go. And off they go, and we cut to the planetarium, which is, and this is a pet peeve of mine, observatory? actually an observatory. It's not yeah. a planetarium. I was going to ask you, because we had this mix up in a prior episode, and you were very adamant on the difference between an observatory and a planetarium. Yeah. So, so this they flip-flopped them. This has the big telescope that aims through the roof that you observe the stars through. That's an observatory. Regardless... Zach rolls An up. easy way to remember that? Observatory, observe a story of stars. <laughs> good, good one, John. <laughs> Not as good as my Bebop and Rocksteady, Rhino, and I forget what the B was. Uh, boar. 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 Yeah, boar. Honkers, we all remember that. It's, great, it's a great <laughs> pneumatic device because I can't remember mnemonic, what the B stands pneumonic for. Pneumonic device, yeah. <laughs> pneumonic. <laughs> <laughs> pneumonic also spelled yeah. in the weirdest way like pneumatic is how i want to spell pneumonic but it's pneumonic not. has like an m and an n in the beginning or What's something pneumatic weird like that mean pneumatic means like pneumatic gas powered. Like a, yeah i think it's like fluid powered fluid yeah Whatever. like nitrogen gas is what i meant to say like mm. gas yeah, yeah anyway we're all, all fucked up on words now so b and r that's what we're just going to refer to him as from now on. But anyway, Zach rolls into the planetarium. I'm going to call it a planetarium, even though it's not. He shows up and he rolls up outside and he's like, well, I'll just sit tight here until the turtles show up. And then I can tell them everything I heard and tell them what the plan is. And a second later, Rocksteady redeems himself and pops out of the bushes and grabs up Zach and drags him inside and says, hey, Shredder, guess who I caught outside? This kid, who I don't know his name, but here he is. And Shredder is excited because he's like, you know what? We've got this kid now, and that means the turtles are going to surrender because they're honorable and they won't let him get harmed. So I was right rock steady just lurking in a bush. He was on patrol. He got the short short stick. I think that was the trap they set for the turtles. But in reality, Zach just rolled into it. He was probably hiding in the bushes waiting for the turtles to show up. So, coincidentally enough, after he catches Zach, the turtles roll in, and as soon as they step out of the van, a hail of blaster fire comes raining down on them from the foot soldiers who are in the doorway of the observatory slash planetarium. I'm going to pause you here, Chris. Okay. Because, because, who steps out of the driver's side door of the van none other than Raphael. wow and so we have a decision I think we need to, to see him driving i was i we have a decision that we can discuss and i i didn't i don't remember who voted or who bet which way but he leaves yeah he gets out of the driver's side door front seat presumably he drove the van to where they're going but are wow. we counting this as did anyone else get i don't remember this i don't remember him getting out of that door did anyone else come out of that door leonardo did well, first or second no 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 no. sorry I, I meant he he came out of the driver's side door earlier in the episode but no one else comes out of the driver's side door i don't believe like someone comes out of the back door driver's side back door I thought that's. I don't think the driver's side door opened when they were in the sewer. I thought they all came out of the sliding door on the side. 
just what happens to you. Uh, what do you think, Andrew? I do not recall the scene happening, so I, I'm going to pull it up right now. All right. I feel like I was I'm zoned sure. in on this, too, waiting to see who it was, so I would have remembered. I don't want to say John's making stuff up, but I... Well, so here's what I will say as he's pulling it up. So here we go. We got a little action here. These are the foot soldiers. Whoa. Wow, nice cut here's scene. Zach. I didn't even remember that. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did remember that. Oh, I'm, I'm a little too I, far back. Hold on. Yeah. I feel like I'm Shredder watching here we go. the surveillance here we go. footage. Oh, oh, go back. All right. Turtles okay, roll up. You see? Yeah. <laughs> oh! <That's- laughs> I mean, that's clear, that's clear as day. <laughs> Rap is no first. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. That's. I mean, he's driving. Yeah, he's driving. <laughs> I don't know. Do we see? Let me just go back five seconds. Do we see he's it out at up? the same time? Is that Donnie on that side? Who's behind? Him? No, that was Leonardo. Hold yeah. On. Let's see if there's any movement. Oh, it's a stationary. Boom! It's <laughs> it's but Raphael. Look, even with him, even with him. Go to... then. Oh, he's clear behind. That's Raf. Yeah, yeah I Raph think it is. It. All right. Wow. <laughs> well, I'm telling you, this spot. <laughs> wow. It's like the JFK Zapruder film, just back. First <laughs> back into the left. So that's <laughs> Raphael leaving the driver's side van. That's one wow. for the good guys. Not how I pictured it happening in my head. <laughs> that counts. It counts so. <laughs> Uh, they're so they're shot at. They have to duck for cover, and they do what every, I guess, good action team does. They're like, we got to split up here. Half of us have to take the foot soldiers. Half of us have to go in and uh, deal with Shredder and be up and rock steady. So Leo and Mikey, I think Leo is making the plan. He's like, Mikey, come with me. We're gonna go inside. Raph and Donnie, you stick out here and handle the foot soldiers. So. Raph and Donnie back on the bottom of the totem pole. They get the grunt work while Leo and Mikey go for the glory. And Leo and Mikey pop into the, they kind of run, they do a little diversion or Donnie and Donnie and Raph do. They do a diversion, draw fire from the foot soldiers and in go Mikey and Leo and Shredder's like, yep, I got your friend here. He's tied up. And Leo's like, well, there's nothing we can do. Surrender. (laughs) Doesn't even, doesn't even attempt to fight. Just, Throws in the towel. The this honorable surrender. Move. It's the honorable yeah. move, though. I mean, they have one of your associates in their grasp. You gotta, you gotta throw down the uh, the weapons. Yeah. And credit to Shredder here. He knows this is the turtles' like one weakness that because it's happened before. I think with April and maybe Splinter, where basically as soon as Shredder has one of their friends, he knows they're just gonna weigh down their weapons. So. They get caught inside. Donnie and Raph are outside and they hatch a pretty cool plan where Donnie's like, hey, let's run. Let's make a break for the transport module that, as we just saw in John's little screenshot, was sticking out of the ground from the foot soldiers coming up. They dive inside and then Donnie starts pre-programming this thing to drive away. So they get inside, they draw in the foot soldiers and then hop out fast enough where they can just hit the button the foot soldiers are trapped and this thing gets thrown in reverse and dives back down to the ground so to rename another episode we just watched the old switcheroo they pull and off go the foot soldiers they don't die this time so (laughs) things are looking up for them i guess they just get they get bamboozled and inside run donnie and raf they're gonna help out fight shredder they pop in same fate. They have to surrender because now Shredder's got Zach, he's got Leo, and he's got Mikey. So it was kind of a funny cut scene where they're like, hey, let's go help these guys out. And then it cuts instantly to them tied up. All four plus Zach tied back to back in these chairs. And Shredder appears to have won the day. Mm-hmm. Now, Shredder is getting a little cocky. And he calls up Krang and he's like, Everything's good up here, man. The planets are aligning. Let's fucking get this plan done. I've got everything under control up here. You don't have to worry about a thing. 
this is going to be awesome. Let's go for it. And the planetary alignment starts. So this light is coming through the telescope. It's hitting the crystals. And Krang is down in the technodrome. And he's starting to kind of levitate up with this thing. It's starting to head toward the surface of the Earth. So finally, one of their plans is working. But like, here's my thing. Like, where's what's it going to levitate up into? That's why I'm a little confused. He's coming up in the park across the street. I know, but like through what it like, it's like floating, but it's not like going through dirt. I mean, he tunneled down there. That's yeah, what it's kind of like ride ride the tunnels. Tunnel? I think. Yeah. Okay. But, right. It's unclear how the that. did they ever show it tunneling previously? I think they did, right? Well, it's just because maybe the first like, the vibrating. Up. Yeah. So anyway, he's he's down there. He's getting you know. He's got the spirit of Jesus in him. He's floating up to the ceiling. And, <laughs> and the turtles are kind of like, well, we're screwed. Like, he, they won this time. But Zach is kind of giving a little pep talk. And he's like, listen, guys, like, you're the turtles. So, like, we can get out of this. We'll figure something out. And he hatches an idea. And he's like, hey, give me one of your turtle comms as quick as you can. Because Donnie's like, these crystals are sensitive. Maybe if we can figure out a way to break them. We do something. So Zach, and we had a little foreshadowing earlier in the episode. He takes one of the turtle comms. He plugs in his junior detective mic. And the crazy feedback frequency kind of stuns everybody and shatters the crystals, causing Crane and the Technodrome to go crashing back down to whatever hole they were in in the center of Earth and breaking the beam of energy completely. It also, coincidentally, uh, kind of flips a shard of the crystal over near the feet of, I think it's Leo, who's tied up in his chair. Yeah. And he's like, hey, maybe if I can flip this crystal up into the air, one of you guys can catch it and use it to cut the ropes. And that's exactly what he does. He takes his turtle foot that only has three toes or two, maybe I forget how many toes they have. And he flings it up into the air perfectly. And they're able to cut themselves free. And I think, um, I went back through the transcript when he flings it in the air, he shouts out Kobe. (laughs) (laughs) Kobe. That's a joke, obviously Jordan. Um, but it's reminiscent of when he throws the moon boots onto Mikey's feet yeah. here. He's just a yeah. whiz. What no a doubt. foot dexterity on these guys. Yeah. So they cut themselves free and they're like, it's on, let's get Shredder. But he immediately smoke grenades their asses and is able to escape with Bebop, Rocksteady, out the door. And they're like, shit, where's the transport module? That's our getaway vehicle. <laughs> it's not there. So they just dive into the tunnel that it left. <laughs> go down the slide. The door opens. They come flying in. Krang is on his back. He's like laying there because he got jumbled when the thing <laughs> fell. And they're kind of all just in a pile in the in the bottom of the Technodrome, having failed yet again. They this This tunnel, one... Every other time they take the transform module, the tunnel refills itself with uh, molten magma. So not sure why that didn't happen this time. And they're like three miles under. They fell down a tunnel for three miles. Yeah. It's unbelievable. It is truly unbelievable. Right into Crank, who's like... I forget, (laughs) he said something weird. He was like, don't act like a... I forget the line. Yeah, it, it didn't really fit. I remember it because it was about being like a pig on your back or something. I can't remember. Yeah, like a bear. He says, don't just stand music. there like a frozen steer. Pick me up. Yeah. yeah. Like deer Where in the headlights, happens. I think he was saying. Yeah. Oh, that would make sense. So their plans foiled. And then back, we're back at the layer now for the everyone's oh. favorite wrap up scene here. Here's the corny joke going to come. So they're at the turtle layer. Zach is there. And he is officially knighted as an honorary turtle. And he's given his own turtle comp. So he's officially one of the gang. And he's like, I'm going to start a fan club. And this is going to be awesome. 
So he's all jazzed up, even though, I mean, I guess he saved the day, but also it was kind of all his fault that this stuff happened. So he's jazzed and the turtles are like, Hey, go home. So they drop him off at his house and he walks up the stairs and his big brother's there again. And he's like, you're an idiot. Still, still think you're a loser. These turtles aren't real. And Zach's like, Oh, the turtles aren't real. Then who dropped me off? And they're in the turtle van. Raph is not driving this time, but they're all Michelangelo the is, yeah. which is like equally also shocking. Rare. Yeah. Also rare. Yeah. And they're like, Hey, little dude. Like they're basically saying, it's like they were scripted. Like these yeah. are all the things you got to say to convince my brother. Cause he's like, you're awesome. You're one of us, you know, whatever else they say. And Zach turns to his brother and he says, Hey bro, do you want to eat this costume with ketchup or mayo? And then everyone laughs and the episode ends. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not great. Not terrible. Just kind of exists. Yeah. He's Zach's. He's a pipsqueak. He's just, it would have been cooler if he was cooler is my feeling on it. He's just too lame. So he, I, I got something to say about Zach. He's wearing a red headband. Shout but out to he has Raphael. green eye covering. So yeah, his yeah, bandana like... is green. Hmm? So if you had to call like like Raph is red, Donnie's purple, Zach is green. No, he's 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 emulating Raphael. No. John, yeah. his headband is red, his eye band is green. They go by eye band color. I mean Chris. Do you know any? Do you, you even watch the show? Do you even know anything about the yeah, turtle? I do, shot? But that's like the rule number one. He did have the double. I thought it was interesting. He had the double band, but to John's point, I mean, he had red on. Yeah, but red head. I get their eye bands. I get their eye bands, but for all intents and purposes, they're headbands. No, Andrew just so says was... that because he likes Raph. Well, yeah, that's fun, Chris. I also have a. Question. Uh, do you recall what color the Crooked Ninja Turtle Gang headbands were? Headbands? They were red. Red. Maybe a little foreshadowing here. Mm-hmm. Well, we don't know. Yeah, I don't so know if it is because I never watched it. Yeah, you know, red. everyone wants to be red. Yeah, red's the best. It's a fact. But that also brings me to a very timely surprise show and tell. Chris, because what did you post this week on the Twitter? So I, on Throwback Thursday, posted the NECA uh, 2022 action figure release of Zach, the fifth turtle. So he came in a combo Hmm. pack with Smash from the Crooked Ninja Turtle Gang, the Zack and Smash pack. But he was basically as as he was in this episode. So I'm assuming that's what Andrew's going to share with us. Yeah, that is, Chris. In fact, this is what I have. Oh, nice. So I kept it in the case. Hold on a sec here. Hopefully everyone can still hear me. I'm going to turn my light off real quick. Mm-hmm. Yes, as you know, when you turn the lights off, you can stop hearing people, so... Yeah. Um, so here it is. Zach and Smash, as Chris mentioned. Um, they are wearing their red bandanas. But uh, pretty cool. I haven't opened this one yet. But uh, comes with is what you would expect. Number one, Zach has his own Turlcom. Hmm. And you know if he's going to be so annoying with that thing. Yeah. Like he's going to be calling these guys all the time, I feel like. Yep. He is. Uh, he comes with interchangeable head. He's got some some goggles, a big diamond. Must be from a different episode. Um, his shell. Like I that do. Ma- is that mask his too? That white mask? So that is um, from a future episode. That one? Yeah. Kind of looks like Darth oh. Vader and Shredder kind of mixed together. It's cool. A little bit. Yeah. I won't, I won't spoil that for you. But anyway. Um, 
what I will say about this, you can find these. Uh, so Chris, you said these came out in 2012 or t- sorry, 2022. I think September of 22 is when they were released. Yeah. You can still find the set in targets today. So clearly not a popular mix of uh, smash and Zach, um, which in fairness, I think both episodes were kind of just meh for both the Crooked Ninja Turtles and Zach. So I can see why it's not very popular. The other one, if you guys could guess, the other NECA double pack that you can still find in stores. Double pack. Yeah, like um, so like two guys like this. I haven't debuted it yet. Bebop and Rocksteady, it must be, right? It's a great guess, but incorrect. John, do you have a guess? Ah, uh, that was gonna be my guess, so no. Yeah, it is um Vernon and the Rat King. Wow. Also ooh. also not very popular, combo. but timely because next episode. You would yeah. think Vernon would come with Bur- is Burn an action figure? Burn? Uh there is a Burn action. And Vern. Vernon. There's a Burn. And there's actually two Vernons. Ooh, interesting. So anyway. Just thought I'd uh, you know, share because I thought it was timely due to Chris's Twitter post. I should Which have again, just texted you and said, send me a photo of your toy instead of looking for one. I forgot you had it. Yeah, I do have it. So I will be opening it. Um, you know, once my computer gets back here, Lenovo looking at you, um, I've got some fun stuff planned for the figures, but for the meantime, I still have some in boxes. And nice. like, can we get a different name than Zach? Wasn't one yeah. of the neutrinos named Zach? Yep. Dak. Like, and Zach. There was a Zach and a Dask. Zach. Dask, that's what it was. Well, I thought the S was silent, my bad. <laughs> yeah. I'll, but uh, so uh, Chris said notably that you're, you can't hear when the lights go off. Uh, something else that feels illegal but isn't when your music is too loud as you're driving by a police officer. Yeah. And sometimes you got to turn the music down to get like drive better focus better yeah yeah when you, when you get near somebody's better. address you're like let me turn the radio down to make sure i get the right house <laughs> oh you know what else feels illegal but isn't left on red on two one-way yeah. streets yeah but then you're like i'm a, I'm a genius because this is a one-way i know what yeah. i'm doing but then sometimes you're also is like wait is it a one-way i like panic in the last second even though i know there's also something that feels illegal but isn't Going around a rotary twice yeah. in a row. <laughs> that is like this when the the sec, once you start the second lap, you're like everybody's staring at me. They know I'm an idiot and I don't know what I'm doing here. Yeah. Absolutely which, get a ticket if you're going around twice. Which I was also thinking, uh great sidekicks. Steve Wozniak. Steve Jobs, right? Isn't it Steve Wozniak? Are they both Steve Steve Wozniak now? was like doing all the work basically and Jobs was yeah. like the taking credit for it. Yeah, no idea. No idea what that so is. I guess yeah, good good that he's not seeking the glory. Um, so now we will move into turtleisms. Cowabunga! Andrew, would you like to start? I'd love to, Chris. This episode did not have a lot, fortunately. Um, so I'll run through them in the order of appearance. Mikey, of course, has has the most. Uh, alliteration to start off. We have a major case of the Midnight Munchies by Michelangelo. Fry me some turtle hash, said Rocksteady. Meddlesome Rebels with Shredder. Turtle power, Zach squeaked out as um, he was messing something up. Ignoramus. Shredder. Don't know how to spell that. Um, Mr. Mock Turtle is what Raf insulted Zach with. Micro dude. So Mikey said that three times this episode. Micro dude was his name for Zach. Um, scarf this pizza. That's what Mikey said to Zach. Uh, Bummer news, bud, by Michelangelo. Exacto mundo by Michelangelo, and a bingo bud by Mikey. That's all I had. Yep. Not a lot. And I will say, sometimes a little turtle hash can give you a case of the midnight munchies. So. Those two yeah. are probably related. Yeah. 
Very nice. John. I was going to say the turtle hash. I, did you see that, Andrew? Yeah, fry me some turtle hash. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Notably, so. no cowabungas this episode. Came off a double cowabunga into a zero cowabunga. So, tough. It is. It's like, what the fuck's going on here? Did chat GPT know something when it made its bet to take the under? No katana throw again. A drought no we've never throw. seen before. Not even maybe, really a lot of weapon throws this season. Maybe we should just do a quick update on the Shellcast Sportsbook. We shall. Do you have it handy? Yes. So, um, as has been mentioned, no cowabungas, no turtle blimp in this episode. Raphael, we've got one on the board for the good guys driving the turtle van. Chris is the only one that took the under on that one. I still um, feel good about that. So, it's fine. No. And then we have uh, no katana throws, although I guess we had one at some point this season. So, yeah, I think it was like the first episode. He came out yeah. of the gate hucking them and then nothing. Yeah. So we've got one. So not a huge update, but that one on the board for Raphael was big, big. in driving the turtle van. So we can huge. only hope that we continue on that trend. So, and while John is sharing update. his screen, we can bring up the villain power rankings. <laughs> Which I can only sure. assume is still on the old template. Well, you know what they say when you assume, Chris? You're correct. <laughs> so it has not yet, it's not think, yet been updated. I think John even had a call to action last week that he like guaranteed that we would yep. be in the new format. So guaranteed. Well, hold on. Hold on. Because I did I did have a I said I guarantee that we will have an update. And then I, I, I uh, qualified myself and I said, at some point in the future. <laughs> so I made, nice. I was happy. Definitive I statement. Made, yeah. 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 And in his I defense, do. a short turnaround. We're recording on a Saturday instead of a yeah. Sunday. First Saturday so we, we may have ever done. Have we ever yeah. record on a Saturday? I don't think so. It does feel strange. I This week felt very short, even though we're only like one day off of our normal cadence for recording. Yeah. yeah. And if, it actually feels pretty similar to me because I had a four-day work week this week. I ended up taking Friday off. I played a lot of golf. And so this feels like a Sunday night to good old Johnny boy. But tomorrow, I've got a six-hour flight coast to coast. And I may just have a little time to do a little update to the Bill and Power Ranking slides. So we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. some stickers, hand them out to every passenger on the plane and maybe ask the stewardess or a steward flight, flight attendant. attendant to throw the YouTube up on the screens. That would be nice. <laughs> I <laughs> can definitively say I will not do that ever. Well, that's a psycho a move. I might be placed on the no fly list. Or a Maybe. two fly list because of how cool this show is. But if you do not try to at least put the TMNT Shellcast sticker on the hand sanitizer bottle that stands in front of everyone's eyes as they board the plane, then uh, if you don't do that, John, then you're not a good co host. That's a fact. Do John, I put a, good a idea. sticker on the inside of the table tray? Yeah, or Ooh. in the in the magazine pocket. Put it in the Sky Mall magazine, just tuck a couple in there. No, they throw sure. us out all the time. <clears throat> okay, or don't. Yeah, well, we'll see where we, we'll see, John, because you're going to yeah, obviously we tweet see. as we encourage all the listeners when you, when you, uh, what's the word? Tag your, um, you know, part of Earth with our stickers, then you should take a picture and tweet it. Hashtag TMT Shellcast. Right, Chris? Yeah. 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 Talk about, That's foot, a good idea. talk about international foot traffic at San Francisco Airport. Not sure what it's called. Yes, that's so baby. Yeah. Uh if I just if I just bang up a sticker real quick somewhere, 
maybe a maybe a baggage claim. Put maybe, it near an outlet. Maybe on the toilet. Maybe no, they clean those right next to an outlet. We'll see. The world is my oyster. <clears throat> we shall see. Anyway, so this episode, no new villains, but the punks have been resurrected. We had some action from the foot soldiers. Bebop and Rocksteady, as usual. Shredder, Krang, bit of a bystander this episode, but nobody added, but a lot of action from those available. So we start where we want to start. Well, let's start with the punks. Did they do enough to crack back into the top 10? Yes. Andrew's a yes. Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm just a yes because they're here and the knucklehead is not. Yeah. Um, they did track and corner two of the turtles. They didn't capture anyone, but they're relevant. So I, in I my mind, in my mind, they move into the 10 hole. The knucklehead comes out and whoever's in the 10 moves out to the nine. Don Tertelli is Tertelli. in the 10 hole. Don that, Tertelli moving up the, the rankings. That would be my vote. So you say Don falls to reserve? No, I would say nine. Don Don goes to nine. The knucklehead goes to reserve and the punks come to 10. That's what I would yeah. say. Just from interesting, interesting that last week when I suggested Don maybe move ahead of the knucklehead, Andrew was quick to dismiss. And yet yep. here we are. Moving it's a different week, up. buddy. Different week. The Anything last week happen. of inactivity makes all the difference. Any given Sunday. <laughs> yeah. Um, so here's a question Foot soldiers. They had a you know more moment of uh, glory, and a moment of not glory, because they were lighting up the turtles. They had to retreat, if you recall, mm -hmm. in front of the planetarium. But then they got okie doke. So, but didn't die. So that is a step in the right direction. Yep. And not only didn't die, they actually made it back to the technodrome. Believe it yeah. or not. So I think. That coupled with some inactivity from the Vivaldi crime syndicate. Yep. I yep. agree. They take a step forward. Yeah, so flip flop four and five. I'll tell you what, if Baxter ever fucking gets back here, he's gonna rock it up these standings. Flops again flipped. Because we get the same cast characters. Yeah. All right. I all right. I'm gonna make potentially a controversial statement right now. I know what you're gonna say, and I agree. Due to inactivity, I think Krang's got to go to three. No, that's not what I was going to say. <laughs> Bob and Rock was... said he go to two. <laughs> Is that accurate you were going to say? Andrew third it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think Krang dips to three. We're talking about inactivity. I think it's got to be. No. I was going to suggest breaking up Bebop and Rocksteady. No. Because Rocksteady, their paths, though they work together continuously they are very clearly not on the same level anymore to me at least well this is uh interesting because i disagree with both of you oh, wow so i think bebop and rocksteady should stay as one and i don't think they That's should leap up crane but one of the questions i have to influence my decision is who put the hit out on the kid? Was it Krang or was it Shredder? <clears throat> Krang told Shredder to take to make the kid sure out. that the turtle. No, I think he said, "Um, no, he said don't let the turtles." He's he did he say get the kid? I don't know who did. That's what I'm trying to remember. I'm I'm looking up the no. Be, I right think now. what happened was they came back after. Getting beat the first time by the turtles at the at the vault, and then Krang said, "Rocksteady screwed up. The turtles are going to figure this out. You need to make sure that they're they're dealt with." I think I think that was as general as he got, as specific as he got about it. And then Shredder did the surveillance footage. Yeah, so I think if that is the case, John's 
checking as as we debate this. Yeah, it's hard to... I think Shredder has to stay at one because he's trying to murder a kid, a teenager, and that's pretty villainous. Okay, Krang, this is as close to being back to normal as the Technodrome has come since it careened down to Earth, the center of Earth. Krang's plan was perfect, and Shredder, one, messed up at the Marconi Labs and spilled the beans on what the plan was. That wasn't Shredder. That was um, Bebop or Rock Study. Yeah, guess what? Uh, if your troops do something, the commander gets in trouble. So, And that only applies to Shredder and Bebop and Rock Study and not to Crane telling Shredder what to do. <laughs> it, was Shredder, and... it was only Shredder's idea that he get, they get the boy. All right, Shredder stays away. Crane was not involved. I think Crane should move up. No. Absolutely he nailed the not. plan. That's... Um, but what, what plan? What plan? His plan, his his capsidium crystal plan worked. It was okay. too. It was implemented too late. He's got a lot going on, John. Okay, Chris, He's... you say that every week. Chris says, "Let us count the ways." <laughs> yeah. Okay. What's... Uh Techno. All right. We already talked about the transport modules. I'm not going to bring that up again, even though he did replace them <laughs> instantly. Okay. <laughs> Two. He's clearly got the AC working because nobody's sweating down there anymore. So that has been repaired. Three, the transport module tunnels have now been resurrected where previously they weren't working. So that's been taken care of. Need I continue, John? Doesn't sound very well, We don't know that, but that's him. What do you mean? Crane is very You're clear that Crane that it's him. is in charge of Technodrome operations. And whether he's telling the rock soldiers what to do or personally doing it, he gets credit for that. I, I think there's fair. no way Crane moves up. He didn't do anything villainous. Yeah, he did, Andrew. What? Uh, <laughs> okay, hold on. Falling, I, I have my over. John frazzled me. <laughs> <laughs> Just give me a second to regroup. So Crane's plan originally was going to work. Okay, that's number one. Villainous plan. Rob it wasn't Lab. that villainous though. He was just trying to harness like energy to, to harness the planetary powers to levitate. Uh, something the size of Shea Stadium out of the ground seems pretty villainous to me. Okay. Two. Debatable. Debatable. He, yeah, after Shredder screwed up the first time, Crane had the foresight to say the turtles... He, Crane is the only one that takes the turtles seriously at this point in their capacity, and he knows that they're going to figure out the plan, so he preemptively sends foot soldiers to help Shredder, who he knows is incompetent and incapable. So, that for what he, he had to do in this episode, he was on top of this stuff. I and think Shredder, yet again, Shredder, yet again, we used to give Crane crap for having the Shredder, or the Shredders, the Turtles dead to rights and letting them go. This is two episodes in a row where Shredder has had all four Turtles dead to rights and hasn't dispatched of them. Yeah, that the same exact thing happened with Krang to end season two and begin yeah, season three. Yeah, and we killed, we moved Krang down the rankings for it, and Shredder's done it two episodes in a row. Two. Yeah, and but the different. What the difference was? I was going to say the difference was like in this episode, should he have killed them first? Yes, but he didn't call off Bebop and Rock City trying to kill him and then get okie doked like Krang did. No, but you know what he did do. He called Crane and bragged about how he had the situation under control. Yeah, and that's like their little push. thing. They're like uh, sticky bond. They just call each other every day to talk <laughs> shit to each other. Yeah. Oh, listen, I. To, if we went back in time and said, after the conversation we had about Crane ruining killing the turtles, and we said Shredder does it twice in a row coming up. No, it would sound the same. Tomatoes, tomatoes. He might um, fall to three. Yeah. I think Crane, <laughs> Crane is teetering on being demoted, but I don't think yeah. he's there yet. I this made the argument Crane that he should slander. be behind. I I made the argument he should be behind Bebop and Rocksteady. What yeah, has Bebop and Rocksteady done correct at all? One. Baxter. Safe door ripped the fuck off. Two. That's it. <laughs> yeah, it tried. Ended. To murder a child. I mean, that's pretty villainous. Yeah, yeah didn't, didn't do it. Couldn't search. 
couldn't go out of their way to besides opening a closet door. I mean, they, inspecting. Chris, if the police <laughs> rolled up on them, they broke into entering and they had what is it uh, intent? Intent, yeah, which is a B &E. uh, considered a more than manslaughter. It's considered conspiracy. What's the other thing? Yeah, whatever. So they would have gone to jail. Premeditated, yeah. premeditation. Premeditated, yeah. Okay, so also Rocksteady couldn't uh, cleanly steal a camera from April. Spilled the beans once on the plan there. Then couldn't Wait, take you, care of... What are you arguing about Bebop and Rocksteady? That they should move <laughs> up or down? No, down. John's <laughs> saying that Crane should fall behind Bebop and Rocksteady. I'm just yeah. saying I made the argument, so there's no way in hell I'm agreeing that he's going to go above yeah. Shredder. I just, Shredder stays at one for me. This is crank. The fact that this is even a conversation that Bebop and Rocksteady, if anything, they should go below the foot soldiers. I'm on that verge no, of doing that. No, no, no. You're confusing just at being active with being a good villain. Yeah. You got to take shots to shoot and make them. I I'm really, should... you know what? I'm, I'm just really not sure what Krang is even doing. We don't know. Yeah. I, I'm too flabbergasted. Really I am shell shocked in what Krang has not been doing this this season. He's sat out all season two in Dimension X, and then in season three, he's been involved in like two episodes. And one of them was where they screwed up and they shot Irma instead of Shredder with the laser, which was Krang's fault. If you recall, <laughs> come on, this is revisionist <laughs> history. We agreed that wasn't Krang's fault. At the it point. was Krang's fault. <laughs> But anyway, the point being, there's no way Craig moves up. He hasn't done anything this entire season. Yeah, he this better do bullshit. something quick or he's moving down. Yeah. And what is yeah, he, all right, so what is Craig doing? What the fuck is Shredder doing on his own volition? Because when we get when we are introduced to Shredder in this episode, he's lounging in a chair like, with his legs crossed, snapping his fingers or doing whatever he's doing. And Craig has to take time out of his busy technodrome repair <laughs> schedule to devise a plan we, and dictate I, it right. to Shredder. Right. And we don't know what he's doing with the Technodrome. We have Why no can't Shredder? Let me ask proof. you this, John. Why hasn't Shredder thought of his own plan in the last 10 episodes? Because he's too busy trying to do Krang's plans. No, yeah. he, he, because he has no plans of his own. He's sitting in a chair lounging while Krang's doing all the planning. Chris, sometimes we need a little R&R. &R. Remember yeah. nap time and, in second grade? And I also forgot to mention earlier that Krang is clearly... A candidate for worst sidekick to Shredder. It's a fact. No, Krang is. He's been in the two hole. He's here. been in the two hole SNK. It was. It first of all. And second of all, he's been in the two hole now for at least like four episodes in a row. Yeah. So he's been in the two hole so long. He's starting to stink, if you know what I'm saying. So if, all right, let me, I'm going to end your plan right here. Why, if, if Krang isn't the number one, then why did Shredder refer to himself as Krang's good right hand? Huh? Shredder knows Chris, he's number two. Chris, as we all know, the king shits and the hand wipes. Yeah, yep. the hand does the dirty work because it's not those the king. Dingleberries, Chris. I just owned you. No. Move Krang up. <laughs> no. Chris, Krang stays a two at risk. He's a two minus, really. He's, he's not at risk. He's not at risk. <laughs> he will be after <laughs> next episode. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> You have an answer. Shredder has oh, no. no. Shredder ha isn't doing anything on his own. Shredder called for a hit on a thirteen-year-old. That's fucking yeah. villainous, buddy. Chris, he fucking he, he and, didn't and call for not a only hit, did he, he said get the kid. He didn't say kill him. He said take he, care of him. Chris, he threw the kid in the pit and turned on the giant pendulum, and turned on the lightning bolt charge. And April's gonna film it. Is she a villain? She would have been. She might be accessory to murder. We'll put April on the board. Put her above Shredder. <laughs> <laughs> I'll whatever. Okay. Krang's number two. I disagree with. Krang is not at risk of uh, falling to number three, especially with who's behind him. Really, we're going to put people up in Rock City at two. No, I said I no to so. that. I said no to that. Well, but if he's going to fall to three, me. somebody has to move up. Yeah, We've I don't see any good candidates right now. Baxter. He's yeah. He's still got a ways to go before he comes back. Perhaps he was in the one hole. Baxter was at the top for a while. Yeah, yeah he got screwed. Crane, screwed Crane was over. MIA. Like the fact that Crane 
by default. Yeah, my... yeah, in season two, he would have been below the the number three. Yeah. If it was weren't for Bebop and Rocksteady also not being present in season two. Yeah, because Baxter he was teaching Shredder. Shredder a lesson. Yeah. And Shredder he, was incapable of doing anything. I know, but Shredder was actually at his best with Baxter in season two. Yeah. And he never he and he gave up Baxter. He didn't appreciate this is Shredder doesn't appreciate what he has, and that's his, his biggest flaw. I hope I hope they I hope Shredder and Krang at some point go their separate ways and we can see how terrible Shredder is without him. We'll, we'll find out. In any event, he's still re- Reign supreme at uh, the number one Quite in the Bill Power ranking. <laughs> yes. Okay. That was that was a passionate one. Yeah. Yeah. So we gotta... Getting railroaded. You two are railroading Crane. No, Crane has sucked. He's by Crane can yeah in the two spot. I don't understand why Crane couldn't get up on his own either. That I didn't get. <laughs> why he's... he falls on his back? He can't. He's got a whole android body. He can't stand up. He's like a turtle. He's like Philbert from Rocco. Yeah. Turn a page, wash your hands. Turn a page, wash your hands. <laughs> All right. That's villain power rankings. Fortunately, not Kring's week. But we will now move to the pizza wheel. And so we had the results of the TikTok poll. <laughs> Yes. The pizza so we pizza. had two added mm-hmm. flavors this week. We had John, just I guess we're doing shredded mozzarella pizza. And then we're doing uh, anchovy and hot fudge. Yes. So to determine who is going to spin the wheel, John is bringing up the TikTok poll from last week. John, will you refresh the audience on what the question was and what the Shall. answers were? The question was, what is the best time of day? Andrew had the number one answer. He chose 2 a.m. And he gave won? a defense. Well, uh, no, he just picked first, I'm saying. Oh, you said the number one answer. Andrew, yeah, yeah was the number, number one, one is in. He picked first. He it picked 2 a.m. Chris had the number two answer. He picked second. He said 7 a.m. and made a defense for 7 a.m. In having listened back to the episode in the past couple of days, I just, your, your logic was hard to follow, Chris. I think 7 a.m. is fine, but I don't know. There's a fly on your fucking <laughs> Mr. Miyagi. This thing out of the air, it's buzzing around my head. Yeah. What do you mean it's hard to follow? 7 a.m. is a great, Saturday, 7 a.m., is the best the, time of the anyone week. awake at 7 a.m. on Saturday is should not be awake on a Saturday. <laughs> like your <laughs> logic was flawed because it's either right before work, which is like the worst time of day, besides being in the middle of work, or it was like on the weekend you're up early. And in my in my head, I'm like, I'd rather be sleeping on the weekend no. or awake. Yeah. Regardless, yeah, you got the whole weekend in front. It's like the well, John, it's like the first bite of a sandwich. You get the whole thing after. How, how do we do for a total number of votes? Total number of votes was 89. I also, wow. Wow. I definitely fucked up the sound on this video. I, I accident, I meant to mute the background video, but I didn't. But it actually kind of worked out. But anyways, 89, no, 89 that's, total, that's 89 votes. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's our second highest. We're, we're, we've been consistently in the high 80s, low 90s. And 51 okay. votes was the winning tally that's 57 percent of the vote so it's a close one it's me the winner of the pizza poll was 2 a.m yep andrew you know why it's because people on tiktok are young and they don't appreciate being up early and productive in the day (laughs) okay it's true they're probably all up at 2 a.m gaming 2 a.m how does it feel to lose two polls in a row did you lose two in a row? No, I wasn't. No, I lost last week. Oh, well, you should have lost. <laughs> you can't. It's impossible to lose two in a row yeah. for the record. Fuck me. Um, All right. Um, just spin the stupid thing. Hopefully, I get anchovies. You want a shuffle? Butter and jelly. Do you want a shuffle? Hey, can your computer handle a shuffle? <laughs> I mean, just, no, it can't. Sassy here. 
No, just spin it. Chris is. Well, this will be his tenth pizza. The first to reach double. I, this episode, I don't want to say collusion, but like a lot of <laughs> a lot of weird stuff going on this episode. I don't think. I think I'm frozen. I told you not to. Spin. <laughs> I just clicked to spin it. I need to I need to go back and do some a little bit of data mining here too to see like it has the winner I don't think it's been the case but has the winner of the pizza poll have they been the like the pick the first person to pick I should say like does that make a big difference Oh yeah uh, you know? I think oh, for well, some questions just, it just so you know it's spinning shit. guys oh. <laughs> <laughs> What is a microwave <laughs> What is microwave mean It's microwaved pizza is this like spinning or wait? So yeah, it's, it's spinning on my spin. spin. Or press control. Oh, it's like okay, now we go. Spinning. Here we go. Yeah. Now we're spinning. Just kidding. This it's is thrilling. On. This is absolutely oh, thrilling. Oh, pickle and is it pickle and you peeler? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Is that what that Peter is? Butter and pickle. Yeah. Wow, that's a great one. That actually might taste good. That is from the. Uh, Season three debut episode number one, peanut butter and pickles. Ooh. The wow. key is what kind of pickle do I choose? That Absolutely. Is... No pickle. Still. Yeah. All the way. Bread and butter, maybe? <clears throat> Horseradish you, pickle? Do you guys know they make a dill pickle relish? So yeah. you have the sweet bread and butter. They make a dill version. Much better. Much better. All right, so I guess I lost the pizza wheel. I'll be eating. That'll be a good one for next week. Peanut butter and pickle pizza. Now, I, or Andrew, whoever does the (laughs) random number usually will do that. And I will get to read the question. Yes. Because I I should say, I spent (laughs) a good amount of time. Chris never I spent a good amount of time this there. week not updating the villain power ranking, but adding questions. Myriad. Wow, questions 47 to total. Wow. Holy Jesus. All right. So one through 47. Yeah. All right. Let's see here. This is truly random, as we've discussed in prior episodes. And we have 18 this is the number 18, 1 8. 18. Number 18. What is the best aroma? What is the best aroma? Ooh. Okay, so I pick first here. Andrew, you pick second. I'm going to give this a little bit of thought. And I'm going to go the best aroma. The best aroma. I just, it's the first thing that came to my head that's also going to fit. In the response, it's going to be the smell of freshly baked cookies. Wow. Warm also, chocolate chip cookies. That's what, what I'm came going. to my head. Yeah. So I, I will say warm cookies for the answer, but, you know, it's, it's I think just everyone hard thinks to beat. chocolate chip when they think cookies yeah. anyway. Yeah. I'm going to have to say warm cookies. So warm chocolate chip cookies. It's fresh out of the oven. Chris, are you a chewy or a crispy uh, cookie guy? I like crispy edges and a chewy center. Mm. So if I mm. go, well, I'm not going to say anything else because I don't want to give other picks away. <laughs> I like a little, I like a little chew. Okay. Warm cookies, Andrew. You have pick number two here. <clears throat> so I'm going to go. It's got to fit. That's the hard part with with TikTok. It's got to fit in the box. Because as we saw with Chris, fold the potatoes will not win you. <laughs> that was bowl. a that was that was a bag. John sandbagged me no, bad on that one. I'm I'm gonna prove to you that it it fit <laughs> folded potato chip. But you shortened yours and didn't shorten mine. Whatever. I did. I sh- it's in the past. <laughs> so a um, couple things come Just, to mind for my answer. Okay, number one, Chris had a great potential answer for this last week when we talked about the uh what was it fresh cut grass reptile draft of summer things right yep andrew you made a defense that it should be a deodorant yeah 
Scott's call to action. I even put that in the show notes. <laughs> I do think, um, have you guys seen those like manly candles? Yeah. There's like a brand out yeah. there. Charcoal. And- yeah. I think they have a fresh cut grass one. That's where I got the idea. But so that one could be up there, but it only plays to part of the population. I feel like it's more of a, you know, those who own lawns. Yeah. Lawn owners, but also lawn cutters, which are probably predominantly men, I would say. <laughs> Perhaps. Um, so I'm going to not go with that answer. Because I want to include I wouldn't, the women. I don't want me in. I wouldn't say that. Just throwing that out there. <laughs> Do not want me in with that. Um, historically, I'll say stereotypically portrayed as men. Um, so I'm not going to go with that. My next thought was a smell that I really enjoy, which is like the new shoe smell. That plastics, like new car, new shoe. But I know not everyone likes that because it's chemicals. So I'm going with the only answer, which is fresh laundry smell. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say clean laundry. How about that? Yep. Clean, clean linen. laundry. I think it's clean the linen. smell that most it's usually what the cable is called. Clean yeah. linen, yeah. Clean linen. Wow. That's <clears> interesting <throat> because you're going with like a refreshing smell where John is going for the comfort and like the warm smell. Yeah, the nostalgia. Yeah, I'm going yeah, with different like parts of brain. Yeah, different parts of the brain. I will say cookies is the first thing that came to mind for me too. Yeah. And I watched this thing on I feel like it was some like bullshit TV channel. Like what's what's all the trash with 90 Day Fiance? Is that TLC? Yeah. 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 So I feel like I was watching TLC and um like this broke ass um real estate agent. But she said in every home that she would go to, she would bring Toll House cookies and just put them in the oven for like 10 minutes just to get the smell going and then take them out and not even have cookies there. But just the, the odor would be um, a way to draw in her open house, you know, uh, candidates. So take that for what it's worth. So I will say if I had to choose between the two, I would wean toward Andrews. That's not... No, no. What? What do you mean? We don't do this. <laughs> Vote in the poll. Stay. I'm preambling, <laughs> okay. and then I'm giving my own yeah. answer. That's fine. So, I, Andrews, <laughs> to me, is a year-round smell. So, John, I don't... When I think summer, I don't think cookies, really. I like... I think laundry plays year-round. And okay, well, that... I mean, who gives a fuck? That wasn't the criteria. John, I, I keep <laughs> free to speak my opinion here, okay? He's the moderator. John's regretting. And my answer, not to put John's answer down anymore, but I don't think cookies are the best smelling thing that can come out of an oven. I think... Pie, because it's going pie. Pie, you could go apple pie, but I am going with cinnamon rolls. Ooh. Cinnamon is the smell that everybody loves. And if you go for the Seinfeld, you know, what's in this cinnamon, cinnamon babka takes no backseat to chocolate babka, (laughs) but cinnamon rolls are a fantastic smell to wake up to. I'll admit they have the same issue with John's answer, but I think I was between coffee, fresh coffee and cinnamon. And I went with cinnamon rolls. Mm. Coffee would be a good one. Like the pot of coffee on in the morning, like first pot. Yeah. I think I like waking like bacon is probably another popular answer. I think bacon's yeah. overrated, but waking up to a smell like like any cooking breakfast, the smell of somebody cooking breakfast when you wake up is nice. Breakfast would have been a good answer too. How about um I mean this was also discussed at length last episode. Your neighbor's grill? Your neighbor grilling? Yeah. yeah. The grill. Um but is that the best smell? Like that yeah. was the question was the best smell. I mean, that's a tough yeah. line to draw. The grill. I don't know. I like this is probably I don't know if this is a good smell or not, but Freedom. Onions and onions and garlic sauteing. I was gonna say yeah, that too. Or like mushroom. Anything with onions or mu- like sauteing with garlic is just incredible smell. Yeah. It's tough because odor, um, olfactory, that whole like area 
of your brain that processes that is so unique because it is so often tied like smells are tied to taste but also to like memories it's such yeah. a weird like fucking yeah hole in the matrix yeah glitch in the matrix but i feel confident i think laundry clean linen fresh linen whatever i'm going with is uh <laughs> is a good one i feel strong about that yeah there's nothing better than I getting actually... into a freshly cleaned bed sheets just yeah, the cover's still a smoked couple, and detergent. Uh, a couple candles here from Yankee Candle. Wow, soft blanket. Ooh. John has the fucking Snuggy Bear, <laughs> Snuggle Bear, whatever his name is. Which Dead that carcass. was. Um, oh, oh my God, Andrew, you're gonna be with me on this one. The Waffle Shack. Oh yeah, at a mountain. At the bottom with the Belgian waffles with the yep. and it just so happens. Wow. Belgian wow. waffle candle. <laughs> and let's just get that cinnamon in there. I mean. Wow. Wow. Imagine that your house. But how about just vanilla? Like yeah, vanillas vanilla's are really good. good. You know Which, what's cre- I mean, it's in chocolate chip cookies, so. Yeah, vanilla, I read um, uh, as a avid home brewer, which some of you may know, some listeners may or may not know. I do dabble in home brewing. Um, I do like sour beer. I will say one thing about sour beer in home brewing. Um, I learned that one of the secrets of the trade for sour beer is to add vanilla to it. Mm-hmm. So fruit play up the fruit pie sweetness vanilla perceived sweetness aspect so uh yeah vanilla has a seat at the table i think with cinnamon people forget vanilla is a bean it's a bean people don't forget and people people forget that a coffee is a pit it's also not a bean who oh of the coffee fruit yeah the it's like a cherry Cherry pit, basically. I just pulled up Yankee Candle top 25 cents. Uh, number one is Pink Sand. Not really sure what that one is. Uh, it's, that's a good smoke candle. It smells yeah. like number, uh, it's kind of tropical ish. Number two is Macintosh. So there's your apple pie, Chris. Yeah, which has the cinnamon. Oh, yeah. shout out Trader Joe's. They're honey crisp a- oh. um, apple candle that comes out in the fall is phenomenal. You should definitely get mm. it. Anything honey. Number, th- top of that. number three is Autumn Wreath, which I think we can all smell. Yeah. Four, clean cotton. Andrew, clean cotton. Yeah. yeah. It's a good bathroom. Number candle. five, Christmas cookie. That's a good one. Yeah. Love a good, love the scent of it. I'm just going to read the top 10 here, but I got to switch pages. Hold, please. That was five. Number six, Lilac Blossoms. No thanks. Number seven, Sparkling Cinnamon. Wow, they have sparkling. one. I think it's called like apples and spice or kitchen spice. That's mm. that's the one you want. Number eight is midnight summer. Number nine, sage and citrus. Number ten, spiced pumpkin. That sounds good. Sounds mm. good. Ooh, good. yeah, pumpkin. pumpkin pie. That's kind of a polarizing, um, like the pumpkin thing, because you know there's so many anti-pumpkin people in the fall. Yeah, losers. <laughs> I will say shout out Yankee Candle Kid. Used to. If you've ever seen the YouTube video of the Yankee Candle Kid, he's incredible. He just buys every foot, every scent, smells it, and rates it. He's, it's very funny. I'll have to People link that, that know. in the show notes. I've never seen yeah. that. I don't, it's, I'll send you a link after. He's unintentionally hilarious. <laughs> so what, right. what's actually funny is that I added a lot of questions to the question list. And it w- it like started right around eighteen, Andrew. Like I basically split the question, so like you you thread the needle there. But wow. Well, can I survive two pizza poles in a row? Has anyone ever done that? John did. John I think. Was on like yeah, I, yeah, I got to look. I got. I, let me go back and look at the stats because I think John did at least two in a row. It just feels like I'm eating fucking pizza every other episode at this point. <laughs> I bought a mega. <laughs> you know how much I've eaten. I bought. <laughs> Like a mega family pack of 
uh, Elio's thinking like, this will last me for a while. I'll keep it in the freezer and just break it out whenever I have to do pizza wheel. I've, I've got like two left and I haven't even eaten any for pleasure. It's just all. <laughs> you know what I have to say? I meant to mention this um, last week about Elio. So I went on their website, believe it or not. Cause I was like, how are we, have we been saying Elio's pizza the right way or the wrong way? I was just curious. So I'm like, there could be another way to say it, right? Elio's. So I go on their website and it says, and this is why I have to call Elio's a farce because on the website, it says it could be, be pronounced either way. Elio's like elephant or Elio's yeah. like eel. It says both are acceptable depending on where you live. Interesting. I also didn't realize, I remember looking this up a while ago. It's only, a, I think it's a Northeast thing. Like Elio's isn't, I thought it was countrywide. It's just like a cheap it's pizza. Not, it's yeah, it's not countrywide. I can't get them out here. It's a shame Chris, you, you I, because I just did a quick sauce. tally. I just did a quick tally here of the last 10 pizzas, including the one that you'll eat next week. Yeah. You've eaten four of 10, Andrew, and I have each eaten three, three of 10. Yeah. I'm in so. fucking pizza hell right now. <laughs> and you guys were eating like for a while. It's like, oh, John, you got pepperoni and cheese. Andrew, you got meatball or whatever. I think I flip flopped those, but. <laughs> Chris, you had mini pizza last time. You've had the easiest of the easiest and the hardest of the hardest. Like like we talked about, there's no in between. Because yeah, Chris, you've had like extra toasted cheese, um, mini pizzas. And then on the flip side, you've had Supreme. Just, you had Supreme. Oh, yeah, you had Supreme. Yeah. Mini pizza is uh, hard to buy. You, I, I, I had Supreme. You had like Supreme with no green peppers. So it's not, you yeah, know, go crazy yeah. here. Well, I'm just <laughs> saying, you're, you're right? talking. You're saying we're getting softballs. You've gotten the softest of softballs. Just sauce? Yeah. Which you fucked up. Hard so you do. Fucked I had up. to peel the cheese you off and then up. fucking put sauce back. <laughs> and every pizza Chris <laughs> says is like the best, his favorite pizza that he's ever had. Yeah. Yeah. No. The mini pizza so, was hard to... I got to I'll, I'll credit to myself for biting right through the bagel bite. Yeah. That was an impressive yeah. bite. That was a great bite. Andrew, Andrew, your last three pizzas and... Uh, mento, uh, blue cheese and anchovy, but it was tuna. Yeah, and then and anchovy, then anchovy. That. anchovy yeah. and sardines before that. Yeah, trash, trash. Peanut butter pickle. Here we come. Yeah, this I'm is. I'm not looking one. forward to this one. I'm I actually. I'm glad that I got a weird one. I like the weird ones. So, so and that, that can we establish your fucking full slice has to be covered in shit. Not just one bite, John. Don't look at me. What? What does it matter? I'm just saying for the fans. And yeah, the photo looks the sashimi pizza looked like shit because you put one slice on there. I, John, it's branding. I don't. I'm not saying you got to eat the whole thing. I get what you're doing, but it's like if there's a rule to bend, John is just in there bending it. There was John's no the Bill ever Belichick of fucking pizza time. The cocoa puff pizza, John, was we clearly discussed beforehand what the intent <laughs> of the pizza was, and you come in with a basically a dessert pie. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Fucking, it was a, yeah. it was basically yeah, that was good. It was like or, one of those or, cookie cakes. Or you can face the fate. You'll have to eat the pizzas that you sandbag. You'll have to eat them all combined on one slice down the road. <laughs> no. Yeah, if if the other two panelists deem your pizza not it's good enough, yeah, <laughs> not up to snuff, then you do the pizza wheel of death. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to figure out like a, a dealer's choice pizza we get to make up. Yeah. All right. That brings this episode to a close. Uh, any last words from either of you before we wrap up? I have a few things. Um, one of which <laughs> is a friendly reminder that I had a pony. <laughs> yeah, friendly reminder um, to check out our TurtleCom voicemail. I will. I said that earlier. I'll say it again until the day I die. Um, but I, I do want to say, since our last episode, we actually have gotten a whole lot of listenership. I will shout out to. Uh, my friend group who I spammed with the shout outs <laughs> last week, Markel, Dave, 
um, Sean. Uh, some admitted they had never listened to the episode yet, so it was much needed. Uh, John, who I mentioned earlier, big fan of watching on YouTube, which is, uh, again, Chris's favorite avenue. Uh, I prefer Spotify, but I'm getting more invested in the YouTube as, as well. I like it. The visuals, John had even said the facial expressions are his favorite part about our YouTube channel. Uh, so there's that, yeah. So I enjoy. think our generation doesn't utilize YouTube the way it can be utilized. Like I feel like we mostly uh, use it just when you're looking to figure out how to do something, like a quick video, but you can basically use it like it's cable. Yeah. And if you're our uncle, I, yeah. YouTube's the best thing that was ever invented. If you're an uncle? If you were our uncle. Oh, yeah. Yeah, big YouTube fans in the family. But um, yeah, boys. so definitely check that out. Um, I've been putting in work on Instagram. I'm just really proud of myself. That's yep. all I got to say. If you want to know what I'm talking about, go check it out, Team and T Shellcast Instagram. So we will catch everybody next week where... Wait. I had some Jesus Christ, words. John, you said you didn't, and now you do. I didn't say I didn't. I was silent, and I let Andrew speak. My last final words, I am getting a new office chair delivered tomorrow. Wow. So next time you see me, I will be much more comfortable than I am right now. Congratulations. It has Good wheels day. and it rotates. Wow. Very nice. Similar to what Shredder's chair looked like in this episode. So thank you, everybody, for listening. Unless John wants to cut me off again. And Andrew will be hosting next week's episode, which I don't have the title of in front of me, but I think it's it's a good one. So yeah, it's Enter the Rat King. Um, do I remember this episode? No, but <laughs> I remember the villain. And if I remember the villain enough, I think I remember this episode, which is pretty good. So all I can say is. It's going to be a better episode than we've gotten, at least recently. Yeah. So, you know. It sounds like a new villain to look forward to. So, yeah. Hmm. All yeah. hail the Rat King. And we will see you all next week. Ciao, bonjour, au revoir.